Hey, everybody. <laughs> see, see if I can do some copyright infringement today. Whoa. Might be a bit, be a bit too loud. I got to see you guys. This is all working out here. Waiting. Oh. Should be live. My laptop, it's not. Live. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Oh, there we go. I want to be able to play the. Uh... See if I can do some copyright infringement today. I want to be able to listen to music while I talk to you guys. It gets extremely boring sitting here talking to myself. So it's good. Sounds like I can I can play my little. Okay, cool. I can play some music while I talk to you guys. It gets really, really quiet in the background. Quiet and kind of tedious in the background here, but I got my lapel mic on, so I reckon you guys can hear me quite well. And I'm going to fight. Ooh, got hair all over my plate. Uh, I'm going to subculture some monocarions. I'm going to make some spawn. I might make some LC. I'm going to do a variety of things here. And uh, first off, let me... Studio alcohol, alcohol, 70% ethyl alcohol. You guys can use isopropyl ethyl alcohol. I don't know, some people have been using a hypochlorous acid and shit like that. I don't know, I don't really see the point, but I don't know, you know, it seems like extra work to do for no real reason. Go. Oh. Anywho, do, do, do. You, you, you. See, here's what's happening when you, when you, you oh, I was going to say, I got got some running marker. I have non-black Sharpies that are running all over the place on one of my, one of my little boxes over there. But let's make sure this music's not too obtrusive. I really, really, really like listening to music while I'm doing this kind of stuff, but might be a little bit too loud. I don't know. Sounds like I can, I can play my little piece. Uh, I'm the subculture, so monocarion. I'm going to make some spawn. I might make some LC. I'm going to do a variety of things here. And uh, first off, let me. Sounds like it's doing okay, but and the camera, I don't know what's up with the camera quality, you guys. This is, a, I mean, being alive here, I don't know if it's going to. Okay, but and the camera, I don't know what's up with the camera quality. You it's guys. like it's shit the, on my laptop know. again. I tried changing my camera on the front and the back, and all it does is, it, or I mean, not, not the front, but it just seems like it's a. Uh, oh, now I can hear myself talking. I need to go stop that. And it doesn't matter because I can't change the camera, it seems like, since it's already started here. So, <laughs> guess that's what we're dealing with, you guys. Sorry, it's a live, live feed. That's probably why. Ooh, sound sounds okay though. So how are you guys doing, Jared? What's up, Michael Babel, Jedi, Jedi, Jedajaya, <laughs> new P. What's up? Good morning. Good afternoon. Ozzy, I thought it was at like, I thought it was four. I woke up. How you guys, I woke up at like one. And I was like, oh man, it's like three o'clock because it's kind of cloudy out today. It's not really cloudy though. It's the pollution in Bangkok. <laughs> it's funny. It, it's like one o'clock, uh, it's two o'clock in the afternoon now here and it's like really really sunny it would be really really sunny but it looks like it's like the like 
six or seven, it's like kind of really cloudy outside. And it's like, no, it's not cloud, it's pollution. They burn all the rice fields here in Southeast Asia this time of the year. And then that combined with the weather and this kind of uh, just like haze that's over this city. It's like, it's really, really not very pleasant. So I'm going to stay inside and do culture work. Plus, I still have enough light to do uh, some, I don't know, as you can see there. I don't know. It looks like I'm probably sitting in a dark, dark area. I'm at my laptop now. I really, really wish that camera quality was better, you guys. But I'm sorry. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's, uh, there's not, I don't think there's anything I can do to make it better. That's a live stream and it's on my phone. So I reckon there's some limitations on that resolution. Plus, I'm on the free plan. So that's probably not how do 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 hey lance what's up yeah you know i just had to put on a damn shirt i really the only reason i had i put on a shirt is so i can keep this fucking lapel mic by my mouth um otherwise i wouldn't have a shirt on but uh yeah i love doing i usually do my i usually do my stale work like naked not naked usually i got like underwear on but yeah it's better actually it's kind of funny it's not it's just, well, I don't know. I don't like wearing clothes, but also it's just good. Like the less clothes you have, the less dusty shit you have hanging off your body, the better. Sometimes when I, I, I made this point so many times, you know, when you're working with like lab coats, if you're doing like sterile tissue culture and you've got sleeves hanging over your work area, stupid, stupid idea. Um, also, if you've got open flames and you have alcohol and other flammable like solvents, it's really, really stupid to wear lab coats. Like lab coats are one of the stupidest things you can wear in an actual lab unless you're dealing with like toxic or caustic you know acids and bases like there's really really no reason for you to wear a lab coat there's like no reason every time i see them like do i don't like you know it depends on the situation but most of the time it's better to not have shit hanging off your body jewelry rings you know watches like when i see people doing sterile tissue culture and they're wearing like rings and watches and shit i'm like wow you you haven't worked in a lab before like I can immediately tell like a novice tissue culture person by what, what they, what jewelry and what, uh, yeah. It's like, wow, you've got a full, like full length, full sleeve lab coat and like a ring and a watch on. It's like, you never really worked in a lab before. <laughs> uh, hey, do you have any tips on Nats, Jackson? No, um, Nats are the same as cubes. Um, that overlay just basically, um, you can decrease the, uh, it's the same, same advice they constantly give, which I never really saw the need to, uh, to do lower the, lower the, um, the amount of moisture in your substrate and increase your FAE. I don't know. Other than that, I've never really had trouble with Nats overlaying, but I don't know. Other people seem to consistently have. I'm kind of almost wondering it's like it's the, <laughs> it becomes some kind of urban myth or something. I don't know. But yeah, maybe it's just the cultigens or this like the strains or isolates or whatever I have. I don't know. But yeah, with more FAE, uh, decrease the decrease the moisture in your substrate. Uh, but gnats are cubensis. <laughs> I'm going to keep, I, I'm not like this is coming up again and again and again. They're like, gnats are not cubensis. I don't know if they're making another push to try to like separate gnats from cubensis. Natalensis is not a species. Uh, good morning, afternoon. Good afternoon. What's up? OP Pico, how's it going? Jason, Rocka, Dr. Salamander, Jackson, do do do. And Jackson, and there was metabolites on this. Uh, yeah, well, Jackson, I don't know. So maybe if that's, um, Oops, I'm on my computer. I can't put questions up there. Um, so if you've got metabolites and mycogony, and so maybe it's not your gnats overlaying. Maybe that's the real problem is people are getting contaminated gnat cultures. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Ozzy, refresh rate on the video card. Um, I'm on my mobile phone. If you have a solution to that, that would be awesome. But I don't know. Uh, it was weird, like when I did the last one, like this, it looked kind of oh, like uploaded or whatever, uh, you know, processed to the, the YouTube. But I don't know. Is there a way I can change that on my phone, Jackson? Uh, not Jackson, Ozzy. Then when DP was up with the West Coast, the East Coast, about to get a flow cranking. Okay, it worked about I needed to. Yeah, Lance, oh, good, man. There's no, nobody said, nobody ever said you had to like wear clothes when you do, uh, you know, tissue culture work. 
<laughs> uh, swabby gills, how do you identify fungal strains? You're going to have to be like way, 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 way more specific than that. I don't know. Are you talking about penicillium, mass virgilis? You talk about different types of cubes, different species. Uh, you know, be way more specific. Uh, what's up, Alan? How's it going? You want to go outside when you live? Uh, no, Lori, not not today. I'm just going to um, chill in here for a little bit. Like I said, the weather outside is miserable. It, it's not the weather. Well, it's hot as fuck, too, but it's like seriously like got some like Bangkok is known for being one of the like most, I don't know, polluted cities in the world, but pretty bad. Main reason it's just hot as fuck outside. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sit in front of my laminar flow hood. Uh, and do some tissue culture. I've been kind of slacking recently. Uh, first, I'm going to put on my Hate Eternal <laughs> back background music. <laughs> See if I can get some copyright infringements. Now, this lapel mic's quite good. It's, uh, it's good at picking up my voice. Uh, it's kind of funny. These I got like a couple sets of them. I was going to do interviews with people that are kind of cool things like a little transponder transmitter receiver transceiver whatever you just stick it right in the bottom of your phone and you put one of these little like uh these little guys kind of cool. just like flip it onto your thing there and uh yeah it's like the good old days they used to have them on you had to wear like a battery pack and all this hip shit man i don't know that's a bit i guess the technology has just gotten so good. I mean, this thing is literally like you, you charge it all over the USB-C and then, yeah, man, it lasts like hours and hours and hours. I, know, I think I got uh, two of these and the transmitter thing. It was about, about 70 or 80 bucks. So they're not cheap, but they're light as hell too, man. It's like this thing, I mean, it's like you, wouldn't, you don't even notice it. You know, before I've done things like that, uh, you know, where you run like a battery pack and you got like, yeah, like cords and shit hanging off you, and it's not it's not very fun. So yeah, you'd end up getting like, yeah, if you've ever done interviews or I've done a few interviews with you know news stations and shit like that back in Michigan, and they uh yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know, they set you up with all the makeup and all that shit. You're under these big ass bright lights and they like wire you up with all this shit. It's like wow. Makes you feel like a movie star for about like five minutes and then you feel like wow this is really annoying why did i agree to do this <laughs> let me i uh these are my uh this is my uh what's this called grafting tape yeah i got two here i usually spray these with alcohol like so these were sitting here because i'll spray them with alcohol like almost like saturate them with alcohol and let them sit um just to like you know in case there's any dust dust stuff on them so what the fuck am I doing while well, here? That's nice. Uh, I was going to give a little tip. There's a, there's a tip for all you guys out there. You know, if you ever uh, yeah, be careful with hair, you know, like girls notice their like other girls hair. I don't know if you ever had that couple, but especially like Asian girls with like thick black hair, they tend to notice like other Asian girls hair that's like maybe dyed like blonde or highlighted or whatever the hell it's called now, you know, like girls notice that kind of stuff. <laughs> so don't make that rookie mistake. Long black hair shows up on like pillowcases and bed sheets, like really, really well. <laughs> I was just listening to some shit on YouTube about the passport bros. There's all the all the stuff now, like people are like exodus from the US. But passport bros. It's kind of funny. The guy was like, Yeah, they used to be called sex pads. It's like, yeah, I guess that's <laughs> passport bro is kind of a nice but there's some age connotation. Usually sex packs are all dirty, like white men like me. But I would, I've been here for 20 years, though, so I don't really get it. I don't fall into that, <laughs> that category. I'm just an expat without the S. Anyway, let me do a little uh, over 
sterilization here. They bought some new towels yesterday, new pack of towels, so maybe I can be a little wasteful. So I'm gonna do first here. How about some Halo Gates, man? I, I really wish I'd been storing my plates on my old Marthas. I really wish I put them somewhere where I could cover them up and they didn't get all dusty, but that's the way it is, man. So let me go make some spawn. So I uh got bags of spawn here. Should say bags of cooked grain. That I'll give a little bit of spray with the alcohol before I cut them open. I got a halo gates here. I've been changing my substrate ratio. So I'm going to really, really give all these gates. I got like all the gates, albino emerald gates. In fact, I do have an albino emerald gates here. Let me grab that instead of the halo gates. I've been having not the greatest success. I got lucid gates, halo gates, emerald gates, albino emerald gates, pearly gates. Got a albino emerald gates here that's pinning actually. So I'm gonna make some spawn out of that. <laughs> got all kinds of shit over here. I don't even know. I, I got like things lined up to make spawn out of. I don't even know if I got enough bags. I got so many things I want to make spawn out of. Maybe uh, maybe I will. Uh, let me let me do this first. Let me subculture this mono kit. I just sprayed alcohol all over that. So let me let me get these monos out of the way so I can deal with all this other shit here. And I got some spot swabs I want to streak. Do this first. I know you yeah, guys, this thing, man. I, it was funny. Somebody the other day was saying, like, oh, got two. If you're going to get an FFU, man, a two by two is so tiny. This is a two by four. It's actually 120 centimeters, but it's a. Uh, ostensibly is that what they say ostensibly it's a two by four um two by four foot and it's just like a pain in the ass to uh, to work in anything in front of anything smaller than this i've done it before i've tried to do it before it really really sucks you want to get a two by four at least um, you don't want to go any smaller than that i don't think uh so here i got a stormtrooper mono i i crossed this with Something that I just restacked up over here. What was the other one? Ah, where'd it go? My God. Anywhere it was a stormtrooper and nirvana. Somewhere in here, I have a nirvana. Anyway, uh, a mono. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of. I haven't done this. I've just been stacking stuff up here and then just kind of thinking uh, what I was going to do. Anyway, this stormtrooper mono that I crossed with the nirvana. Um, I don't know how well you can see that again. Sorry about the quality, you guys. I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to subculture this. So I got had a question mark there because I did I did check it for um, for clamps. And uh, when I put the M1, usually when I put them onto new plates, like so I did the grab and drag and I did four and I pulled two off and I checked them for clamps. That's why I put the M1. I put the question mark because I don't really... I don't confirm them until I usually have baited them with something. And this M1 question mark is now going to be a M1, no question mark. And I will check it later again before I ever use it for, uh, for lack of clamps. But for right now, I'm just going to subculture. So one of the things with monos, if you let them grow, that's like, uh, let's see, that's going to be about like just about a month, 30 days old. So that was February 7th, but it's like March 8th now. Um, yeah, and you can see it hasn't pinned. It's not getting rhizomorphic. So that's, uh, and also that I, I actually, I, I, uh, I made it with another mono. Then it formed fruits. So I know it's a good mono. A lot of people are releasing these monos. I think that they haven't tested. They have not fruited with anything. I think that's a horrible, horrible idea, you know, but to each their own. So I'm just going to subculture this. I don't know what the hell I just did with that the Nirvana mono. So my standard thing here, normally I just get these really, really, really hot. And then I plunge them in there, destroy any possible remnants of biological material. And then I, I normally don't talk this much. This is the other reason I, I never did like lives when I was working in front of the hood before because I, I never did any videos because i hate talking 
wearing a mask is kind of one of those silly things. Again, when you're talking through a mask, remember you're pushing out all those dust particles and things from the mask. So it's, it's kind of, it's like a mask doesn't really do anything <laughs> when you're talking. Anyway, I'm going to kind of stop talking a little bit when I get down to this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of funny. I'm trying to notice I'm modifying my the angle here, the way I hold my hand, so I can show you guys in the video. I noticed that the other the other day, it's a little bit hard to see some of the stuff I'm doing. Well, and my crafting tape wants to stick to my glove for some odd reason. Never did that before. <laughs> Static electricity. The weather. I've been running my air here. All static electricity thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's funny too. I can feel I went to the gym and did a few bench presses the other day. I can feel it now on my wrist. <laughs> it's funny when you get a little bit older, those, you know, days it takes you to recover or the days you feel like, oh, not like a nice long bike ride. You're like, ah, I'll go on a two hour mountain bike ride. You feel it <laughs> a lot more when you start to get older. So let me put this over here to the side with my piles of monos. I've got piles and piles of monos. I see shit like this. This is when you see like that kind of shit. You're like, maybe I should get that on grain. <laughs> it's like, got like fucking three inch mushrooms growing off of my plate. Oh, there we go. Here's my Nirvana. <laughs> I don't know, man. This is going to get messy real quick here. <laughs> I'm already seeing shit over here. I should subculture too. Mm -hmm. Ragnarok. I see this over there. I'll let that grow out a little bit. You can see I cut off three pieces. Yeah, this was a multi-spore plate, and then I cut off three pieces there, and I'm trying to get a nice riser out of there, but I'm going to let that grow. It looks kind of nice there, but I don't know. It's kind of one of those things, like, I could subculture it and probably get it on a nice, clean plate, have it real, look real pretty, but sometimes I don't really care that much anymore. One of those things like, and do I really want to waste another plate, or can I just make spawn on that later? But I already have a bunch of spawn and spawn to make today. So. And I got a couple swabs here. I don't know if I was going to streak these out or what I was going to do. It's like piling stuff up over here. And I'm not really sure. I was thinking like three in the morning, I see something. I'm like, oh, yeah, I should do that. Here was a cool diamond. I know I want to, I know I want to streak this because I want to go on to F2. So I'm going to T0 MS, you know, F2, F1 multi spore. And this is a stargazer times a tap black cap. So I got a tap black 
Cap Mono 2. Seems like everybody loving the tap black caps. Now, somebody told me they tested really high on some some cup or something. Anyway, so this is an Inca Stargazer and a Tat Black Cap Daimon. So the Stargazer was a Dicarian, the Tat Black Cap is a mono I got. So I got a Tat Black Cap mono, a Hillbilly mono, a Tat mono, like a good old normal Tat mono, and a bunch of other monos I, I want to release that I'm finally getting through the fruiting stage of the testing. Like I, like I said, I really am never going to release a mono that I haven't actually gotten actual fruit from across whether it's a diamond cross or a mon mon cross and that takes time like it literally takes like months so wait i'm gonna streak this one so i can see here i put i make my little backups and i put three which throws off the count on a 10 pack of swabs <laughs> then you got an odd number of swabs left but i'm just gonna swab this And I'm not really interested in doing a multi spore there, a uh, grab and drag. I'm just doing a streak plate. So I just want to get a uh, literally like a multi spore plate that I can make spawn out of later. So I'm not really interested in getting like single spores from that. I just want to get as many possible genotypes, or maybe phenotypes, do a pheno hunt later. So I get my genotypes, I make a bag of multi spore spawn, and then I do a pheno hunt. So this is going to go back in my doomsday box and that's going to go on another pile <laughs> another pile another pile make another pile on another shelf i really want well, i'm wondering what i did with that fracking here's my tap black cap mono i have better looking plates than this but i'm gonna pull off something really small from this and just get it onto a new plate maybe that's why i was getting confused i knew i was going to subculture two monos maybe this is the one i was going to subculture i got the other nirvana mono over there somewhere it might be in one of these piles here but yeah this is the tap black cap so you can see i've checked this multiple Times the negative signs that I put the dates like January 15, I tested February 22nd, I tested it. So this has been like uh, tested and checked multiple times. Oops, not four, eight, eight, four, 24. Geez. So even with monos, it's good to like kind of stay near the, the, as close to the original plate as you can, you know, senescence and all that stuff. Like if you keep subculture and subculture and subculture, and, um, then, you know, you just accumulate genetic mutations. I mean, that's really where senescence comes from. You know, senescence comes from essentially when you have mitotic divisions, i.e. like, you know, this culture starts growing, you know, on one side of the plate. And I would make some liquid culture from this, but I have a whole big old jar over there. So, yeah, when it starts from there, every time, you know, it does another cellular division, that's a chance for, uh, for mutations to accumulate. So mutations occur, they're just the errors. So it's kind of, uh, it's another thing I frequently hear people say like, oh, you know, I got a mutation in my tub. No, that's probably not a mutation. Number one, it's environmental. Uh, number two, mutations are actually quite, or they're quite rare in nature. Um, I mean, given that we're dealing with sometimes thousands or you know, tens of thousands of spores and like a multi-spore thing, yeah, you could get a mutation, but when people get mutations in a tub, like a monotub, and it's something that's like a mushroom growing up against the side of the tub or something, 
they'll often get quite excited. I mean, I did too at the beginning. And they're like, oh, I got a mutation. What you realize, that's not a mutation. It's what we call phenotypic plasticity or it's environmental conditions. Um, it's not just because you see some weird fruit growing on the side of your mono tub, like smashed up against the wall. That doesn't mean it's a mutation. Um, people get like really, really super excited about that, but it's probably not a mutation most of the time. It's probably just uh, what we call phenotypic plasticity. Or it's just simply an environmental thing. I, it's like a fucked up fruit. <laughs> I'll give her my Nirvana. My Nirvana mono is somewhere over here. I thought I had it. In here, let me check the questions real quick. Oh boy, I heard a lot of questions, you guys. I might have to go back to the computer for this. Ooh, I, my contacts, I just put my contacts in like 30 minutes ago. They're kind of fucking up my eyes. I have an FFU blowing straight in my eyes. Ain't helping either. Dr. Sam, under what's up? Jackson, under metabolics on the surface. Okay, fresh straight on the video card. Cheers. West Coast. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna like, yeah, this makes it easier. Uh, do, 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 do. How do you identify? Let's see. Let's see. Jared, I'd like the end camera would be better. Ah, uh, yeah, Jared, I'm not gonna set up all that shit. So uh, I'm not gonna like modify my whole front room just to be a. This is not a not a studio here. Uh, Antonio, good suggestions, I know, but like I, I'm not not right now. I'm not gonna. Where the camera is like secondary. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, Tennessee, Antonio, what's up? Uh, Antonio, I am on lots of discords. It should be very, very easy to find me. Um, Lori, yeah, yes. yeah, that's yeah, that's the problem, Ozzy. Yeah, I think that's it. If it's if it's gonna if i'm moving around and shit like if it's just focusing on a face i think it's okay but when there's like action going on in the thing it's just we got to deal with it do, do, do. what's up coin glad you're here women notice everything yes that's <laughs> women notice everything and men don't know that women notice everything until you get like really old like me and then you're like wow i did some dumb shit when i was younger no wonder i got in so much trouble uh, I'm setting up stream yard soon, paid version. Pink hair, yeah, I, I hate pink hair too. <laughs> so. Anytime I see people with like colored hair now, I'm just like, wow, you really want attention. Like you're, there's something very, you're like a very, very boring person. And so that's why you need to dye your hair pink. It's like, look at me, I'm cool. No, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe sorry if anybody else has got pink here. Just like screams, like, look at me, I need attention. <laughs> Much love getting Ringo. Black sheets could <laughs> D D D D D. Uh the problem is Ozzy, the the black linen um most Asian women, if you haven't noticed now, don't have black hair anymore. So that's kind of a problem. <laughs> More much. Uh, as I said, a rash a trick. Now, Lance, it's your yes, your bad spawn. I Lance, like this is one of those things. Like people used to be like, oh, you get tricked, burn your lab, blah blah blah. It's bullshit. I like you can have actively growing trick tubs. Like I got shoe boxes. I got twenty shoe boxes in my tent. Like they're like right next to each other. Like I've. I rarely get trick anymore, but you, you can have like, I had trick that was going for two days while I was gone. Just take it out and throw it away. It doesn't contaminate other things. Trick comes from bad spawn, as you, you said there. Bad spawn is where trick comes from and it's exacerbated by bad growing conditions. So if you have excessive moisture in your spawn, 
lack of fresh air exchange, et cetera. Um, yeah. If anybody says like, oh, you got tricked, you should burn everything, throw it all away, blah, blah, blah. That's fucking utter bullshit. That is a very, very inexperienced grower. If anybody's giving you suggestions like, oh, you got tricked in your mono tub, you better throw the whole fucking thing away, burn it. Um, you should not listen to that person because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. If you get trick in a tub, you just clean it out with a sponge, not a fucking scotch bright, a sponge, now not like a don't like get out the sandpaper and shit, but like just go in there with a sponge, soap, bleach, whatever alcohol, you clean it out and you use it again. Uh, if you can wash dishes, you can clean out a tub that's had trick and just use it again. Yeah, it comes like trick starts everything virtually every single problem we ever have starts with bad spawn and bad spawn usually starts with improperly hydrated grain and improperly hydrated grain leads to usually so you take improperly hydrated grain and you don't sterilize it long enough and you're not able to sterilize it properly because it's not properly hydrated and then you have shitty spawn that goes bacterial gets trick gets mycogony and it gets cobweb mold. Like all of our problems start from bad spawn. Straight to fruiting condition, I'm mixing um, coin. Yeah, I'm not really sure. When people say straight to fruiting conditions, I guess I, I don't. I don't do that. I let it. I let it uh, consolidate. I call it or incubate for like three or four days because I want to make sure that spawn's recovered. When it's gone through all that physical manipulation, I want to make sure it looks good before I throw it in my tent. You can do it if you want really depends i have a tent and now i haven't been doing the pseudo casing and i've been just like after four days like letting the letting the spawn recover and i just stick it in the and i probably showed that on the last video you let it recover three or four days make sure it's looking okay and i put it in the tent yeah i have pseudo casing so if you want to call that straight to fruiting conditions um yes but i would i would let it colonize for two or three four days just to make sure it's okay. But if, if you don't want to do that and you're limited on your space, you can just chuck it straight in there. But uh, I hesitate to say that because a lot of people, if you're doing like mono tubs or a lot of people have trouble with fresh air exchange and they want to mist and all this shit. I don't mist anymore um, because my RH in my tent is like 95%. But if you're going to a mono tub and you're still having to mist and stuff, that's where you're going to get into trouble. Like if you're going straight to fruiting and then you start misting like naked grains that you've just bashed up or not naked grains, but grains that you've just bashed up and the, the spawn, the basically the grain sort of exposed, maybe you ripped a couple of them open and you're exposing like, you know, the inside of the grain that might not be fully colonized, like then you could have problems. Um, yeah. Useless mass. Yeah. He's getting sticky situation. That kills the top of the kills. I don't know what that means. MD. Oh, that you mean a mutation? Yeah, gills on the tap. That's not a mutation. That's a that's so that's a really really. I hate to say it. That's like a novice mistake. Like if you see gills growing on the top of your mushroom for the first time, it's because you know why it's your first time because you haven't grown enough mushrooms. It's very common. They used to call it a rose comb mutation. It's not a mutation. It's just environmental. It, again, it's a sign of, I hate to say it, but it's a sign of like a fairly new grower. Uh, now I got some pantera going on here. Uh, yeah, if you if you get really, really excited because you see like a, a hat, like on a B plus, like a party hat. Or you see like, you know, weird funky fruit squished up the side of the wall or you see gills in a weird place on your mushroom like the stem you're like oh man i got this like crazy ass mutation it's like that's because you haven't grown enough mushrooms yet happens all the time it's usually the result is just something like a water droplet or some weird like it's a physical something happened when you were maybe making the spawn or one of your fruits as it was a primordia maybe it like I don't know, it got like touched with something or a drop of water fell on it or whatever. Samuel, I just got behind it on the question. 70% Samuel, always 70%, 70 to 75% isopropyl or ethanol. Ethanol? Ethanol? <laughs> ethanol, been listening to too many Canadians. Ethanol or uh, ethyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, whatever. 
Um, it's up to you, you know. I don't know. You can sterilize everything as much as you want. Alcohol is cheap. I would basically do whatever you feel necessary. Oh. Hey, what's up, Karina? Do, 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 Antonio. Um, now I can't wrap a Discord link. Antonio, you can go find me. I'm on like virtually every Discord. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not on there very often, but go to Myco Geekies or, I mean, I'm on like 25 Discords. You should be able to find me. Just search my name, Edward Grant. Do, 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 do. Um, do, do, do. I think I added too much water to myself. Yeah, that, that's not a good idea, Lance. Um, adding. <laughs> Oops, I forgot I could change the questions here, you guys. Um, yeah, that's not a good idea, Lance. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Uh, Lance, do I think have different varieties now? I don't I don't really believe all that shit about there. There's clearly um, different effects based on growing addition conditions, but the alkaloids are all the same. Um, it's kind of one of those like silly things that goes on and on forever and ever and ever. Um, there's like basically like, I don't know, what is it? Six or seven main alkaloids, uh, which, you know, psilocin and psilocybin would be the main ones, you know, yeah, origination and biocysteine and all that other shit. But psilocin and, and psilocybin, those are the main alkaloids and they are going to have the predominant, I mean, they're going to, you know, the main effects for your experience and yeah, good grow of any cultigen is going to give you a lot of those alkaloids. Um, so it, it's different from cannabis. A lot of people come over from the cannabis world and they think like, uh, can't, the amount of breeding that's been done in the cannabis is so extensive over many, many decades. We're not quite there with cubes. Like, and there's not a huge variety. Remember we're dealing with a basically a cosmopolitan mushroom that is like distributed and has mixed and mated. Like it's the same, like when people start talking about land races and shit like that, it's not the same as cannabis i know a lot of people make to like make analogies to cannabis and stuff but it's not cannabis it's mushrooms I'm just looking for the uh what i did with the old there it is i knew it nirvana mono <laughs> i knew it was over here in the pile yeah i rarely like once it gets over here in the pile i kind of don't forget it on the subculture this Yes, I don't even know. I know Nirvana, so a white one. No, it's a band. Uh, a lot of people here wear Nirvana shirts. It's, it's that whole, you know, Kurt Cobain thingy. A lot of angst filled use here. <laughs> You get angst, Phil Anselmo, yeah, back there. Got a little Pantera in the background. Hope you guys can't hear that. But if you can hear it, then probably YouTube can hear it. Yeah, I think this is the Great Southern Trend Kill, I think. Phil's an angry guy. Phil Anselmo, the, the singer for Pantera. I don't think they're, but Dime Bag Daryl got, what did he get shot, Dad? Remember? Anyway, I don't think Pantera is around. If they are, they're probably playing at some county fair somewhere. <laughs> Anyway, what am I gonna do with these Nirvana and these? Uh, to be honest, I got a hillbilly mono over there. I should probably be mating it with shit like that, but I've got so many damn crosses now that I'm gonna like hold off on the crosses. It's like the sort of thing, it's like I, I got so many like the albino emerald gates. I need to like cross some shit that like maybe people actually want spores for. <laughs> like it's kind of weird. Like sometimes when I'll get like check my orders, I don't I don't sell that many spores, but. Like sometimes I'll get people that will order like 20 crosses and maybe a couple of the classics, you know, and then I'll get other people that just like want classics. I, I don't know, like it's weird how the market works, <laughs> the ebb and flow. I mean, like people want like new exotic things and then they just want like some good old classics. Like the Jack Frost, Yellow Umbo here. I'm going to 
one last. Yeah, here you go. Time to make spawn. Jibber jabbering. Jibber jabbering. Do do do. Welcome, Lance. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. You're going to eat strong more. Yeah, yeah it's this thing. I don't understand. This is a weird, weird thing to me. Um, the amount of cubes that you have to you have to eat, I, I don't really understand this big fascination with um, this big fascination with potency. Yeah, this is interesting. I have a big bag of tryptamines. Uh, tryptophane is the one. So a friend of mine asked me to possible feed uh there is so okay one of the things here you need to have your friend korea go look up the they literally put in um so yeah the screen just went blank there for a second guys um yeah he needs to go look up and realize that like the only precursor that's going to have any effect like these dumbasses were trying to feed they were putting like fucking five MEO DMT or something in their mushroom substrate. Any any competent biochemist or chemist or scientist will be able to look at the biosynthetic pathway for psilocin and psilocybin production and realize that the steps that are required, there's there's two kind of proposed routes. Both of those um, would not benefit by supplementation of anything but tryptophan. So tryptophan, the amino acid that starts, it's kind of the precursor for all of the indole alkaloids, is cheap. It's a, it's a supplement. You can buy it probably at GNC. Um, you can buy it off the internet. I bought a kilo for like four bucks. They, they supplement cattle feed with it. it. It basically makes animals, pigs, cattle, chicken, like grow way faster and produce more meat. Um, so yeah, tryptophan or tryptophan. So make sure your friend Karina doesn't fuck up. Don't don't start putting like DMT in your mushroom substrate. That is stupid. Waste of DMT. Uh, and if you're, somebody's doing that, it, they clearly don't know what the fuck they're doing. Because if you look, the the biosynthetic route for psilocin, it's just it's a basic like enzymatic reaction that like if you understand substrates and like reaction rates and you know, equilibrium rates and shit like that, it's 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 anyway. If your friend is doing that, the only thing that could possibly help would be supplementation with tryptophan or fan, tryptophan, not tryptamine, uh, like tryptophan, like so it's P-H-A-N at the end, tryptophan, tryptophan, however you want to say it, not tryptamine, tryptamine, different chemical. Um, anyway, so yeah, tryptophan supplementation, Ben, we're back to bottlenecks, right? If you think about a factory, like, say you have a factory, like a car factory, let's just go Henry Ford, say there's 25 steps to making that car. You can only produce as many cars as the slowest, what we call the rate limiting step, right? So if the late limiting, late rate limiting step, ugh, I live in Asia too long, rate limiting step, if that's something like, say, the phosphorylation of that hydroxyl group, or it's the methylation of of the amine at the end of the, you know, the little tail at the end of the, uh, the tryptophan or the decarboxylation or, or, or whatever it's, um, whatever that rate limiting step could be. Um, so it's, it does, you know, whatever, if your friend knows what they're doing, they'll, they'll figure it out. Um, but the idea of just throwing simply tryptophan into your substrate to increase, uh, the overall indole content at the end, your alkaloids is kind of stupid. I, and I didn't realize how stupid it was, but everybody makes the mistake. You go back 25 years on the forums and see people were talking about this forever. Uh, cause tryptophan is, is a cheap amino acid. So it makes sense. You give more substrate, you're going to get more alkaloids in the end product. That in fact is not the case. Um, another analogy, I think like if you put more gas in your car, it doesn't make it go faster right? There's a limit to how fast your car can go, regardless of how much gas it has in the tank. So again, the, the rate limiting step in there would be the displacement of your engine. You know, how, how big of an engine do you got? So yeah, it does make sense if you think about it. You know, it's kind of like if you just like go, if you drink a bunch of protein shakes, but you don't go to the gym, you're just going to get fat, right? <laughs> it's not going to make you stronger just by 
you know, if you neck down like 6,000 calories of protein shakes in every day, you're just going to get fat, right? Someone make me some spawn now. I'm not going to do anything fancy today. Ain't going to be no in the bag diamond crosses or any shit like that. It's just going to be like straight up spawn making. It's going to be straight up making some spawn. So this is a CKB and a great monster cross. People have been getting, I sent out um, some free swabs and some people bought them and I've been getting, seeing some crazy shit like people with the CKB, these diamond crosses I made with the blobs. Oh, well, my speaker just stopped. Um, they've been getting some all crazy shit, crazy, crazy, crazy shit. So this is the F2. So this is a uh, clone one, F2. C4, CKB, man, the labeling on this shit gets messy <laughs> after a while. So this is a diamond with a CKB chocolate crinkle brain blob, and that is um, a great monster mono carry on. Do, 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 do. Let me write all this stuff and I can still tell there's alcohol on this bag, so it's probably gonna schmear. Schmear. Mike Mir, schmear. So, there we go. Great monster. Not great white monster, not great northern monitor, not northern great whites. Yes, monster. This is a really weird, weird culture. I sent out some spore swabs to some people. It's fucking bitch. It does not like to germinate. It's not like to grow. It's one of those that it's like, that's why you get really interested in it because you're like, wow, this fucking thing does not want to cooperate. Like, I want to try to grow it. <laughs> like, because it's weird. Man, I this spawn has been sitting around for like two weeks. I was, it looked kind of slimy. I don't know. On music stop. What the hell's going on here? Oh, it's YouTube asking me. I don't know why it does this sometimes. I actually if pants here can get me. So yeah, that's a cool cross. If you guys, uh, if you guys are interested. So that's the interesting thing too is GM grows like such shit that I wanted to kind of, um, I wanted to cross. I don't know, just cross it with stuff to make it grow faster. It worked. <laughs> so now I got a bunch of. Great monster crosses that need attention. Need attention. Uh, somebody, man, the CKB too. I did a cross. Somebody, oh my, yeah, somebody's got some blobs and the albino ODP E times a shot key that really people really, really like that. Somebody sent me a picture of a a blob the other day. I don't I don't even want to call it a mutation because most blobs I think are environmental also, but they're more epigenetic. So it I guess you could consider a mutation. Um but yeah was this weird it looked like a kind of like pile of like weird like dirty socks kind of thing. Like you know clean dirty socks. 
it was pretty pretty cool looking it wasn't really a fin or a coral or a blob it was just like this weird it's like you took like a bunch of like pasta like lasagna noodles or still call them noodles like lasagna noodles and just like wadded them up in a ball and like chucked them in a, in a tub it's pretty cool anyway i got f1s down there Shoot, shit. so this is gonna go back way over here on the pile because otherwise i got my ckb pile way 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 over here a lot of ckb crosses um that was ckb was the first blob i ever grew I didn't have Enigma. Like, it was funny because that, oh, Enigma needs to be gifted. I was growing, like, I literally had, like, probably 200 different cultigens because, well, you know, it's Enigma and you're, like, not supposed to sell it and you can't ask anybody for it and all this shit. It was like, wow, really? Um, yeah, it was yeah, it's probably mine. It's kind of annoying. And so, like, for, like, two years, I was just growing all this shit and I didn't have uh, Enigma. Um, Annoying. So, so I started uh, sorry, just checking the sound again. I uh, yeah, I made all these CKB crosses, and I was like, well, I don't really want to do DDK because I think it's kind of annoying and pretentious. And uh, so I'm just like, what's this up with this Daimon thing, this Buller phenomenon? Like, let me try that. And so I just started doing a bunch of Daimons with all with this CKB, and because CKB was the only blob that I had, I just did like 15 fucking crosses, like great creature yellow umbo so now like like because i haven't really had time you see that thing's pinning right there i didn't really have time to get around to like fucking with all the f1s and the f2s and all that so now like a year later i'm getting around because like people are pulling all this cool shit and i'm like i want some cool shit <laughs> so i'm on f2s for a lot of these so this is f2 I don't know, transfer number two, I'm going to transfer T0, but that says T0, but so this is a great creature. This is one of Dave, he went, I think, I believe he said he went back to, I don't know, he said the, the TAT source genetics or something, or GT source gen, I don't remember what he said, but anyway, he went way the hell back and whatever his GT print and he pulled off this thing, it was kind of, he said it was like his kind of uh, trying to rejuvenate or re kind of like a reiteration of the great uh you know the, the um, golden teachers <laughs> i was like what does gt mean uh, golden teachers just like kind of a redux of like a typical little brown ass you know you have nice full See you guys what I mean? It's like even with a two by four tent, see how I'm like, like I don't wanna I wanna keep my bag and everything, you know, like upwind of this is why you want a wider hood. The wider your hood, the better. If you have room, for sure. Don't don't even like literally just don't even buy a two by two hood. If you don't have the money yet for a two by four hood, or you don't have the room, wait till you have the room. If you get a two by two hood and you're trying to do liquid culture or bags or anything, you are gonna be so fucking frustrated. Like it needs to be at least two foot high and four foot wide. If you were dealing with a two by two, the only thing you can really do in front of a two by two is agar transfers. 
that is going to frustrate the shit out of you. Trust me. I've worked in front of a lot of hoods been doing this for a long, long time. If you are going to drop three or 400 bucks on a two by two hood, you are immediately going to be disappointed and be like, wow, I wish I would have saved up another 200 bucks, 200, 300 or 400 bucks and got the two by four. The word of advice, man, this grain looks kind of overcooked. <laughs> it looks kind of slimy too. It smells fine, which is, it's probably okay. I mean, it should be, it's been sitting there for two weeks. So, you know, so this is a good control. So if you guys are worried about your grain being sterile, back to the spawn. If you're worried about your spawn having a problem, what you can do is literally like I've done, like I cook this grain like literally, it's, I think it's probably been more like three weeks ago and it's just been sitting here. No contam, right? If you let your grain sit for like two or three weeks and it doesn't have any contam, that means that your grain is sterile. So that's what we call a control in biology. Like cook your grain and the ones you're, you're, say you cook eight grain bags or eight jars or six jars or whatever, like keep one or two of them aside and don't do anything to them. Like, don't put agar in them. Don't open them. Don't do anything. Just let them sit there on a shelf by the little quiet. And if they get contaminated, then you know they got a problem. That means your grain sterilization was the problem. Now, if they sit there for three weeks like those have, and they don't grow anything, they don't turn green, then you're okay. You know what I'm saying? So let me put this back. This is, uh, oh, I'm getting multiple piles here. That's the pile. There we go. CKB times the golden creature. I don't want to make duplicate piles on. I got a CKB times a iceberg too. Oh my God. Stop it. I need to get like, like I wish like you guys in the U S there's so many cultivators in the U S you can like send shit to your friends to fruit. Like I don't have any friends. So like, help me fruit. <laughs> I do have one, but I think she's pretty busy right now. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys got a bunch of questions. I'm not sure I'm going to get to all these questions, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, Lance, consistency is the way. Learn to grow better. That's how you get, like, better. It Like, work on the genetics later. People focus too much on genetics. And instead of learning to grow better, they're just like, oh, I can get better genetics. That's not going to work. You need to learn how to grow mushrooms properly. That's how you get stronger mushrooms. You work on the genetics later. There's such, and those testing results are all bullshit. Like, people are sending in, like, blobs and aborts, and it's just a bunch of, it's just marketing. Like any cube genetics is basically going to give you a solid, you know, 0.8 to one and a half percent, whatever, you know, I don't even want to get into it. it. Pisses me off. It's just marketing and fucking gimmicks. Uh, it sucks to take two little onions. Uh, you, you had a, I overturned a box containing six jars of LC. I have backup plates. Uh, it's just, what is this stretch? I don't know what the scratch method is, Kashik. I don't know what you, I don't know what means I overturned a box. It means I overturned a box and painting six to. I don't know what the scratch method is, Kashik. I've never heard of that. I don't got a lot of those like forums and stuff that people come up with these texts and their methods. I'm not familiar with the words they use because I don't listen and don't go to read most of its bullshit. Like I used to read a lot of that stuff. Now I don't really waste my time anymore. Uh, what's your take on liquid culture? Um, yeah, liquid culture is for bulk growing. I would stick to agar plates, Lance. Unless you're going to make like 10 jars of the same exact cultigen, there's no reason to do liquid culture. Um, unless you're ordering it from the internet and it's a, it's just like you don't have the facilities to do agar. But if you have the facilities and the ability and the skill to do agar, you should stick with agar. 
tryptophan could would work the tryptophan would my eyes are all fucked up yes my air conditioner is like blowing right in my eyes my context Ozzy, tryptophan would not work better with the grain as you don't feed from the substrate. Um, yeah, it's a little more complicated than that, Ozzy. And I think you misspoke a couple things there too, but uh, there's enough overlap in tools and techniques by college finder. That's the big thing. Uh, yes, I have Antonio. Very, very similar. I've also done mammalian tissue culture, which is also similar. Um, stems, tissue culture, immortal cell lines, cancer lines, whatever, tumor lines. I've, I've done an extensive amount of tissue culture in my life. Karina goes to church pain and amino acid, a little bit of metaphor. That's clear picture. Thank you, Karina. Yeah, I tried. ADB is taking off on my place. Can't wait. Cool. Ace. Uh, Lance said, I've learned three great lessons from your take up your pillow. Yes, that's good. Yes, yes. Um, do you have any more? Take a piss before you put your gloves on. Uh, so another one, Lance. <laughs> hey, take a piss and try to hold off on the dabs. <laughs> okay, they, they work at AM. Ozzy, you work man. Good, uh, have a good night, Ozzy. Yeah, Karina goes to Nigeria. Yeah, it's funny in Europe. I, I thought like Europe, I think because people like associate Holland with like the whole magic mushroom, the truffles and all that shit, you know, like Amsterdam. But like I've, I get a lot of people from England. I send stuff off to Europe quite often and people are like, oh, it's so hard to get genetics. I mean, I guess kind of weird, but America really is sort of the epicenter for like magic mushroom production now. It's the numbers of people, you know? But yeah, I send a lot of people. The rest of the world's finally catching off, man. I probably should have been, but I send things. Let's just say I send things to like India, like Iran, and like us, some other places that I don't know. They're just like, we don't, we can't get this shit. And I'm like, wow, it's cool that I live outside of America and I can send shit from here. And like, it's not going to be quite so sus, you know? It's like if you get a package from Thailand, People be like, oh, it's just a postcard from my relatives on vacation. You get some shit from America, you know, like Seattle, Washington. People are going to be like, oh, we should check that out. You know, you get some like innocuous looking like business envelope from Bangkok, Thailand. It's like, eh, that's just a postcard or some shit, you know, like the fucking customs aren't like so, too suspicious so that like, oh, yeah, that's just some. It probably is. The, oh, I got a little Jinjo, little gecko. <laughs> cool. I got this little gecko. He's been hanging out in my room, in my lab. Geckos are cool. He can eat some bugs. You know, geckos come from eggs. I know I should know that, but I saw. Like, sometimes in the bathroom, you find, like, these little eggs. And you're like, what the fuck is this little egg in my bathroom? It's like, oh, that's a gecko. Dusty, dusty yellow umbo and the man. I can feel the dust on the top of that. I'm not going to make spawn of this. I'm going to just subculture this because that is from November. That's probably a little bit too old to be making spawn. Just felt that touch the edge. It's nice I can listen to music while I go ahead. It doesn't pick up. It's the F1. But my Bluetooth doesn't seem to be cooperating today. I got like the RF transmitter from the lapel mic. I got Bluetooth. Probably my neighbor's got multiple shit going on. God knows what the hell the government and the fucking spy the shit they're listening <laughs> but you see there's some pins all over there do 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 
so yeah, the whole yellow umbo thing. Yellow umbo is supposed to be a cross between Jack Frost, which I have over there, and uh, that, which I have in my tent. Yeah, what's going on there? Uh, yeah, this supposedly interspecific hybrid. I really want to put this fucking thing to the bed. Natalensis is not a species. So you can't, the problem is, if you're going to call something a hybrid, an inter two species. So the premise of the whole idea, they're not crosses. It's, it's like saying that if you put a fucking Pomeranian and a Chihuahua together and they fuck, it's like, oh, it's a hybrid. Or like a Labrador and a Poodle, like, oh, it's a hybrid. It's like not a fucking hybrid because they're both dogs. It's very, very simple people really they're still they're fucking milking that for as much as they can because i still hear it oh yoshi was the first one to do a fucking interspecific hybrid no he wasn't it's not an interspecific hybrid it's the same fucking species oh but there's a dna sequence uh, yeah i don't get me started on that shit that's what i did for my phd i know all about dna sequences but I fucking bored talking about it because I've been going on about it for like a fucking year and people still like say the same. I hate to say it, dumb shit. They just don't. It's like, can you listen to me? <laughs> they just don't listen. So I've gotten really bored talking about it. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to stop talking about it now. Fucking Phil Anselmo making me fucking angry. Who fucking you back? Who fucking you back? <laughs> Phil's an angry guy. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. uh, see, do, do. have you ever worked with Gila cells? Yes, Antonio, I have. I used to work with them every day. Uh, I used to work with HEK and HeLa cell. Uh, I can't even remember. We had like a bunch of different cell lines. We used to work with primary cells also. We would uh, we would sacrifice a dog every week uh, to get primary cells and work with them pretty much for the rest of the week. It cost us about five thousand dollars every time we uh, what did we had a fancy word for it? Sacrifice. I think it was I mean, like uh, yeah, it was like uh, harvested. We harvested a dog. Yeah, and so we were in primary cell. So one doggy went bye bye every Tuesday morning by my hands, and we used primary cells from that stomach for a variety of experiments. Karina, do you know someone who would do call a wood loving expert on social media? Um, nah, I don't know the wood loving people, Karina. I'm not really into the wood lovers because I don't have, I don't have a, I don't have a place to grow them. And I'm not really that super into them anyways. Uh, There's a variety of reasons. I don't really find them that interesting. But uh, Karina, do 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 Netherlands. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah, uh, Netherlands is where all the, you know, all the all the uh, all the genetics got exported. It's it's kind of funny. Like here too in Thailand, you know, like everybody, all the all the strains that are available here, which pretty much like I think I have all of them. <laughs> um, they're all from America. They're and like half the shit's from fucking Tat or Yoshi shit, which is gonna probably not they like I don't know, like Thailand was fully under the fucking Tat spell and that's like all, like a couple dudes like ordered this whole inventory and so that shit like is flooded the market here, but we're gonna change that real quick. Um doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. oh dessert desert, yeah. <laughs> Good, 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 good call there, Karina. Good uh, correction. They said super boring. Yeah, don't worry, Karina. There's a this is foreswaps.com. <laughs> uh, streams looking a little rough. Yeah, undead. I know. Sorry, man. That's what we're dealing with. Off topic, but how do you feel about cats? I am a cat person. Um, I am a dog person too, but I don't really like um, I don't really like animals in the lab kind of thing like i think it's kind of a bad idea um i know people that have dogs and cats and it's a perennial problem they have um if you really really like you really shouldn't have animals around your 
sterile culture work. I've got like pets, uh, bugs, they're called bugs, insects to deal with here. And yeah, it's just annoying. Like even I just saw a little bug flying around. I live in the tropics. Like if you got a cat or a dog that's actively in your grow area, you're going to have a lot of failure. It's just simple. Kids, dogs, cats. If you go to pet your dog and then like if I pet my dog, like you've noticed I've sprayed my alcohol my hands with alcohol like at least 10 times, probably more like 20. If you're petting your dog or you've got dog hair, cat dander and shit floating around in the air, it's just simple. It's it's not not fucking rocket science. You're gonna have a hard time doing sterile tissue culture work. So here's a KSAT, which is a uh Kosamoy cross with a tat. This was a Dave creation of even Nutcracker. I forgot who made that shit. Michael Clay, maybe. Um, and you see there's a little cute little fruit body in there. I don't know how well you can see, but there's a fruit body. Plate doesn't look all that great, to be honest, but there's a fruit on there. So I'm going to make spawn out of this and subculture. In fact, it almost looks like it maybe have a little spot of bacteria there, but we're going to ignore that. You see, this is another one. I went from like water agar, it looks like shit. Then I subcultured it, it looks better. I don't know, man. Subcultures, they just don't look good. I don't know why. But looks good enough to make spawn out of. And step one, five. So, man, this is one. Yeah, this one, a set. This is one I would have hoped probably have an F2 somewhere. I probably do, but like I was going through a little moving the lab patch there and I was getting a lot of fruit where I couldn't move on to my F2. So I still got a lot of things on F1, which means the spores from these fruit. So this is what's kind of neat. It's then this is why I want to grow this is because this is the F1 original cross that obviously is a successful cross. What you really want as a consumer, what you want from me, like Karina, what you want is the, the next generation of this. So what you want are the spores from that mushroom because that's going to be the F2. So what happened, these two monos will come together and they will undergo somatogamy, karyogamy, and then they make a fruit. And in that fruit, in the gills, those two nuclei will undergo karyogamy and then they will undergo meiosis. So karyogamy, recom recombination, and meiosis, and they will make four new basidiospores. Those four new basidiospores will be unique genetic combinations of the KSAT and the nutcracker. That's when you make multi-spore spawn, this, and you do a pheno hunt. And that's where you get the shit. Like, that's where you get genetic diversity. That's where you get all those new strains. So, Karina, when you get... Uh, F1, the F1 spores, what I label the F1 spores from this plate, you will then make the F2 generation. And the F2 generation is where you get all your phenotypic diversity. That's where you get new strains. I'm going to call them that. And that's when you can, if you're, uh, if you're brave, you can give it a name. Back in the day, people used to wait till F4, F5 to give it a name. Eh, people don't give a shit anymore. F2, give it a name. Fuck, it doesn't matter. Wow, West man, people are naming, they're naming F2 fucking F1 cannabis fucking strains. You should be about these older people that are like, you gotta wait till F4, F5. You know why they were doing that? So, meaning they want you to go four to fruit, four to fruit, four to fruit. So, they want you to do that four or five times. You know why they want you to do that? Because it slows you down. Because some of these people that have been doing this for decades now, they don't want everybody else catching up with them. Because they've got like, oh, they've got their new, you know, F8, F9, whatever. And they, it took them a long time to do that. So in order to prevent other people from basically catching up with them, which you would never be able to do, 
because to grow them something out to F9 will take you probably at least a year. So in order to prevent you from getting to market with your new strain or your new name or your new whatever product, your competition, they want to slow you down. They want for every F, so if you go from F2 to F3, that's going to take you a month. So you get to F9, you know, if everything works out well, that's going to take you a year at least. And that's why they want to slow new growers down. That's exactly why they, they're like always bitching about this. Oh, you can't release anything till it's F6, F7. That's because they want to slow people down. They want to slow down their competition. And they're, they'll be like, well, you got to stabilize it. Well, yeah, really? Well, what about your F8, your F9 that's fucking revert? Like, oh, yeah, it's really stabilized. Like, again, old school shit. It's just old school gatekeepers that want to fucking oppress new growers. That's all. Same shit. When I started, when I started publishing these techniques, like how to get monos, how to do crosses, how to do a diamond cross in the bag. Like these motherfuckers came after me hard and they still are, but they gave up because, well, the YouTube videos are out there. If you want to do mon mon crosses, like doing, I'm showing you how to do it right now. Right. I've got lots of videos that show you how to do it. That's why they fucking hate me. Because instead of doing some antiquated technique like serial dilution and going to F7 and, you know, waiting or DDK and all this shit, it's like they, you can just do what I'm showing you to do with literally what's sitting right in front of me. Hey, well, I say something real quick. If you wanted to be cheeky, you could go in and I could probably grab spores from that. Maybe not that one, but I'm not going to do that. And I probably should have sterilized that scalpel before I went in there, but it was sticking in my alcohol. So it's okay. Um, yeah, sometimes if you get like fruit, like in, they call them in vitro fruit, like in vitro means glass, but it could be in plastico. Um, you can get spores and you can up the F number. So this was the F1. I could, you know, go in there and grab spores and do it then I get up the F number. So every time you go back to spores, you increase the F number. So F stands for filial. It means basically brethren, like brothers and sisters. So every time you go back to meiosis, which means spores, um, you increase the F number. So notice I subcultured that. I still live F. So it was F1, and I went from transfer four to transfer five. Right. Generation. So when you sculpture, you don't increase the F number. The only way you can increase the F number is if, for instance, you have like this where I took spores. So multi spore T0 means it's the first plate. And I streak just like I did early in the video. And this is F1. In fact, I'm going to actually call it F2 now. So when I actually put this in spawn, I'll actually call it F2 because I'm assuming that spawn will make fruit bodies, which would be the brothers and sisters. Um, and so that will be F2. People have different, different ideas about that, but whatever. Get another conversation. I get kind of bored having. It's all basic in basic biology books. If you wanna, if you wanna go figure out about what what F numbers and stuff, all you need to do is look up Punnett square on Wikipedia, and there will be lots and lots and lots of formation. So now where do I put this? Mm. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I gotta watch these things. So much shit going on over here. I'm gonna run out of spawn bags real quick. So let me just do what I got here. So that looks clean. There's a multi-spore plate. And clean, these are my swabs. This was a, a albino B plus, which is a B negative or B minus. Um, and this is crossed with my toke mono. And so this is gonna be the F2. So what I did, I got a fruit from that and I did a swab plate and I'm gonna make this and it's gonna be F2 and I'm gonna do a phenol hunt. <laughs> so F2 is where all the cool shit starts happening because you've gone, you, you've mated two spores, two haploid spores. They've recombined. They formed a dicarion through somatogamy. And then they underwent karyogamy in the basidia 
uh, a little that final terminal cell in the mushroom fruit body, and they had to go uh, recombination meiosis and make four new haploids. Uh, so in the basidia, it goes from dikaryotic to diploid, and then that diploid um, undergoes meiosis and it forms the four haploid basidiospores. It's again kind of basic biology. If you go look in any biology book and look up meiosis, it will have lots and lots of stuff there about meiosis. Fungi are a bit weird because they only truly have a diploid, at least mushroom. Mushroom fungi, but city of my seeds. Sorry, I'm getting further back away, so I don't spit on my spawn. Uh, they, they're weird because they only go through an actual truly diploid, like 2N phase in the terminal cell, which is called the basidia, uh, basidium. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's where they undergo recombination and meiosis to make new genetic combinations. So you see that I take a big piece. So I take a fairly large piece there, assuming that there are going to be multiple genotypes there. Those multiple genotypes are going to compete in this bag. And then when I fruit the spawn from this bag, those genotypes are hopefully going to express multiple phenotypes. Then I can do a pheno hunt and I can clone what I want. And then I can go on to subsequent generations. So those subsequent generations, that's the process of stabilization. Um, so I'm going to label this F2 now. Uh, those, those subsequent generations, when you go back and you go back to spore and then you look for the same phenotype again, that's what's called stabilization. So you want to look for the same phenotype. So if you do that over and over, generation to generation, you know, F1, F2, F3, F4, whatever. Um, so it actually what started F2 for me. Uh, Oh, by the way, that's labeled B minus two because I have two isolates of a B negative um, or B minus. Um, I have two isolates, that's why it's B dash. It's fine. It's my second isolate, and as I did many times, for some reason, my I had two isolates, and I grabbed the one instead of instead of the first one. For some reason, I grabbed the second one. So now I have this awkward labeling system. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is a B? So here's where it gets a little tricky because I want to subculture this, but I don't know. I don't really want to like pick a single colony because I want to preserve the kind of genotypic diversity here. But at the same time, I don't want it to get, if there is contaminants in there, I don't want to like, I don't know, I'm going to leave that. Eh, maybe I'll stop. Oh, I don't know. I'll subculture it. Sometimes it's nice to have a good, nice rhizomorphic. If you have multi-sport plates, they, they're not going to probably develop too many rhizomorphic things. But if you kind of like eliminate some of those genotypes and they're um, not competing so much with each other. So I'm gonna write it. Oh, this is my fat marker. I can tell. It's funny the uh, sharpies. You get really particular when you're labeling shit all day long. You're like this one's too fat. I need to get a new one. <laughs> How does that work in other aspects of life? Like this one's too fat now. I want a new one. My fucking husband's belly. It's too fat. Can I get a new one? That's where the passport bros come in. <laughs> uh, although, some of you guys, are getting, if you're heading over here for that, you're going to be a little shocked. Like Asian women are getting pretty fucked fat now too. <laughs> like remarkably fat it's like wow in the last like five years like like i live in a college town 
like 18 year old girls ain't supposed to be that big. Like Asian 18 year old girls ain't supposed to be this big, but that's what, when you eat KFC and donuts, fucking ice cream shop and fucking Starbucks coffee on every corner. That's what you get. Congratulations, Western civilization. You fucked up the whole world. Fucking Procter Gant. What is that fucking? All these food companies, they don't give a fuck, right? <laughs> Everybody's addicted to Coke and fentanyl and fucking fried chicken. <laughs> Me too. As I drink Coke and I had fried chicken for breakfast. No fail today. No nitrous. Just sorry, I lied to uh, what, what was it? Um, my Korea. Sorry, I told her I was gonna get like high as fuck on my Lex Live, but people out there for some reason think I don't like weed. I smoke weed, like not a lot, but I smoke weed. But I made some comments about stoners before, so there's a whole bunch of like butt hurt stoners out there. They're like, "Ooh, and don't like weed." Like, no, I. Just got high last night. <laughs> it's probably why I'm in such a good mood today. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Image web paints. Um, off topic. Okay, undead zomboy. Did the majority of plate your plates make it to time save when you moved initially? Yeah, uh, undead. I was here. I was just moving to a different place in Thailand. I just like moved down the street. But it doesn't matter if you're moving to another room, another house down the street. Same thing. Um, I didn't. Uh, but yeah, plates. I've got plates. Oh, shit. That reminds me. Shit. I got. Yeah, I just got a package in my motorcycle. I think it might be from Dichotomous. I fucking forgot. It's sitting in my motorcycle. Um, yeah, stuff arrives here safe. It's sitting it, like, I don't know. It, it's amazing shit around the world. My spores. I send spores all around the world. People send me cultures here. I send them back to the U.S. It's an LC the other day. The girl at the post office was like bending the fucking package. I'm like, my God, it's okay, though, because I got it like well vacuum sealed. Anyway, yeah, shit goes all over the world, man. The mail system is incredible. It still works. <laughs> Snail mail still does work. Do, 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 favorite cube. Uh, I don't have a favorite cube undid. Do, do, do. it's like asking somebody what, who you know the favorite kid or whatever like i don't i don't have a it's like a favorite song favorite album i don't have any of those favorites i don't have a favorite band favorite although my favorite band would probably be slayer but <laughs> but i don't have like a favorite slayer song although that might be ghost of war too but <laughs> ghosts of war ah, reminds me i might go fuck out the fucking slayer since i can get away with that i love listening to music while i do shit um, you go out for a mono. How, how many monos are you pulling on a plate? Uh, I used to Korean. I used to pull like fifteen or twenty. I've gotten quite good at it, so now I usually just pull like five or six. Like so, I'll normally put three on a new plate, sometimes four, but it depends on what the cultigen. If it's something like that tap black cap, I might have pulled like you know eight, nine, ten. Oh sweet, YouTube just fucking put on an old Metallica album. <laughs> Uh, dude, if I could fucking ride the lightning. Wow. Um, do, 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 uh, no, monos are pulling from a plate. Not as many as possible. I put, so what I do, I'll put three on a plate when I full, first pull them and then I let them grow out and then I'll check them one by one. And I usually now I'll check two, maybe three. If they don't have clamps, I'll put my own individual plate. Um, it becomes like a plate management thing. Like you really only need one mono. And like once you learn to do the grab and drag well and you can fruit mushrooms, like you can get new monos very, very easily. It's not as hard as like people think. It's after you get them when the real work begins. People are under the false impression that, oh, I just need to learn how to pull monos. That's like the tip of the iceberg, believe me. Like if you were learning how to like ski, that would be like, oh, I've put my skis on. Like you haven't even got on the lift yet. <laughs> You're not going downhill. Like you haven't even learned how to stop. Like you're, you're just, you just learned how to like buckle on your boots. And like, that's like, like, wow, I isolated a mono. Like that's, yeah, that's just the very, very, very beginning. Uh, do, 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 um, dicarians. I usually like pull one dicarian. Sometimes not any. I, sometimes I just, uh, leave. Oops, shit. 
Uh, Karina, yeah, sometimes I just like you saw there, I just leave things fucking freaking out again here. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, sometimes I just leave the multi spore. I don't even pull a dicarion because I usually fruit multi spore plates now. When you get clean swabs, like those are swabs I made, so they're obviously clean. When you do that, you don't like you don't really need to isolate from the multi spore plate because it's not dirty. One of the main reasons why like people used to isolate from multi spore plates and they used to always advocate like, oh, you go to the T T3, T4 before you make spawn. Problem with that, you're eliminating phenotypes. And the other problem is you are um, you're basically wasting plates, wasting plates, um, because when you have a clean multi spore plate, you actually most of the time you want to have some phenotypic diversity in your fruit. So that's why you use multi spore spawn. So when you're when you're doing like T2, T3, you know, transfers to new plates, essentially you're eliminating genetic diversity, which you may want to do. Um, if you were just say, oh, I want that nutcracker phenotype, you know, that I saw in the picture, like, yeah, you might want to do that. You might want to get it to one to a monoculture so that you know you're dealing with one when one genotype you know one type of you know one strain they used to call them strains still do in in other sciences but you're dealing with one strain and that's because you want to test that strain now if you're looking for phenotypic diversity you're doing a pheno hunt you don't want to do that like you want to use what we call your multi-spore t0 plate your germ plate Wow, sweet man, YouTube played fucking Ride the Lightning. I was just talking about this album yesterday. That's probably why they're fucking playing it. Motherfuckers listening to me, my friends talk. They probably were. No, oh, literally, like last night, I was talking to my friends about this fucking album. Now it's playing on YouTube. Seems a bit suspicious. <laughs> not really. It was not suspicious because they were clearly listening to me and my friends' fucking conversation. <laughs> like, and now it's asking me if I want to keep playing this because it wants me to go back and look at the advertisements that have popped up. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, it's all good, though. It's actually not right. Or like he says some thrash metal combination. Compilation. So you guys went to pee. Chicken. Maybe the thrash metal compilation. Maybe I'll get some anthrax or some SOD in here. Do, 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 do. do nope. Sounds like Sepultura. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Sepultura is thrash metal, but ba 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 dee. If you're gonna. Trina, if you are going out for a mono, what's a mono hunt? So, mono, oh, 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 wait, talk about the same thing. Uh, basically, gate, yeah, gatekeeping. Um, do, do, do. Is it not possible for me to handle it? No, I said one time. Um, yeah, I don't have any suggested, Karina. Sorry. Clone yourself. <laughs> I can't do it either. I had to cut back. I have had to, um, I've had to just, you just got to do what you can, man. There's nothing, um, nothing I can suggest. Get more efficient at doing the processes and eliminate, try to eliminate all your contamination so you don't have to repeat runs. Been chatting with you about mics. Hey, Michael, Miguel. I really send the mics on. Yeah, man, mites, Miguel, m mites are bad, bad fucking news, dude. I didn't even, I never experienced nights until I moved to my new place. And it was weird because what it was, I had an old bag of ATL spawn. So I, this is literally, and I'm getting freaked out, like ATL, sclerotia. Like if these are, these have been sitting here for like, wow. Wow. Almost like six months, eight months now. And they form these sclerotia, but after a while, I need to harvest these. But one of these bags got mites, and inside, I ripped open one of these bags, and there was, like, this fucking nest of insects inside. And, yeah, I had that sitting on the same shelf as all my other bags of spawn. And it was, like, literally, it was, like, this nest of fucking mites. There was, like, millions of mites there. 
And for like two months, all my spawn was getting contaminated. And then the mites were getting in my grow tent. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, I was using little Marthas then. Somebody was saying earlier about people that are like, oh, you can't grow cubes in Marthas. So whoever, that's fucking moronic. I don't know where this shit comes from, you guys. And that's the gatekeepers trying to fuck you up. If you hear something that sounds really, really stupid, like, oh, you can't grow cubes in Marthas. Like, that's fucking dudes that are either really like, that's like a brain dead motherfucker. I'm sorry. Like, if there's really some guy out there that thinks you can't grow cubes in a Martha, like, I don't know if they have like a traumatic brain injury or what. Like, TV high shit, you know, like, did you have a really, really bad bump on your head when you were in high school? Because that doesn't make any fucking sense. Cubes will grow in a goddamn plastic bag. They'll grow in the fucking garbage. If you, if you throw away like spawn, they will grow everywhere. It's just a matter of how well they'll grow and whether you're going to look nice. Anyway, yeah, mites are bad, dude. Miguel, I would just, dude, I would literally like, don't worry about tricks so much, man. But mites, uh, mites, like M-I-T-E-S, you guys, they are bad news, man. Get rid of them. I would anything that had any remote bags of dirt. This is why cannabis and mushrooms don't work well together because plants have mites. They're different species, but it's the same basic idea, man. You're providing like plant material, compost, fertilizer. Mites love that shit. And you do not want mites in your mushroom grow. But, you know, so you. I would not grow weed and, my, and mushrooms in the same house. But some people do, and they usually have a lot of contamination issues. Um, undead zombie F doesn't have really much to do with the clone. F has to do with whether it's a clone. Or not. F has to do with what generation number it's on. So generation is unfortunately used in different contexts in mushroom growing. Generation is used in the context of spawn when you do grain to grain. So if you start off with a what they might call master spawn or a G1, when you use that G to G to G grain to grain, usually we say like G2, G3, G4. That's when you're doing grain to grain. You're essentially cloning the, the, the grain. Um, but it would still be the same F number. F is a reference to filial generation. So it's a different, um, different thing. So like if you made a clone of like an F4, that clone would still be F4. Like you wouldn't increase the F number. Uh, no one said no S. Yeah, it's all the whole world is the same now, man. It's like basically, yeah, the whole, the whole world is the same. Fucking Asia, you go like anywhere, like in an international airport, and you're like, wow, like, like everywhere is the same. Like, it's all the same shit. It's all Burger Kings and fucking KFCs and Prada and Gucci store. It's all it's all the same shit. But yeah, it's like yeah, it's true. Victor, I think single monos is so random. Mm, not sure what you mean by that. But do you like Sodom? Yeah, I do. But you spelled it wrong, Karina. <laughs> I do like Sodom. It's only got one D in it, though. I think. Pretty sure. You take the bang of wool in the throne room. Ah, yeah. I'll try to remember. You know, I get like, I get like so many band suggestions from people these days. Like everybody's got, they're like, yeah, I, I usually I'll check it out. Wolves in the throne room. <laughs> yeah. He's some of the newer stuff that I've seen, like, as far as like, like, I, I kind of like some black metal stuff, but some of it's like behemoth. I did. I rediscovered behemoth. The, a few, you know, of course, shit. Like, I don't know, a thing like Venom. I don't know. I didn't really, I don't really know if I'd consider Venom to be like black metal, but whatever. <laughs> I guess that was like. Anyway, I think they had a song actually called Black Metal, right? Um, anyway, I don't know. I never really got into Venom. That really crisp sign of recording style they had back in the 80s. I'm not really super into that. Back some of this shit they're playing on this thrash metal compilation right now. I think they're, it's a testament song playing now. I think it's a little bit too like tinny or something. I don't know. Uh, 
Exodus. It's that it's either practice what you preach. Is that a testament or Exodus song? I can't remember. Okay, so I'm going to use the small swan bag because the man himself, Jay Cruz, and several other people are like, you got to use less spawn. So I am going to use the small spawn bag because I'm probably going to use same size shoebox. Funny, I got these the fruit. I don't know what the fuck I did, but last year I had a good run of all these gate things, and I don't know what the hell I did. Changed something, and then they just like I get the I get really nice pin sets. I guess it was probably my spawn ratios. You know, come and think about it. <laughs> That's when I was fruiting in these like seedling trays instead of my shoe boxes. So yeah, dumbass. Probably exactly what happened. I went from using the same amount of spawn in a big seedling tray to a shoebox. That's when I started getting all of these. Like, and then, like, oh, I think the kind of was called abortion forests or something the other day. <laughs> Yeah, well, pin sets, and then they get like about an inch and a half high and then just sort of stop growing. Let's hope that doesn't happen. To be honest, I'm just kind of hoping this spawn grows because <laughs> it looks kind of sticky. <laughs> Put this over in your spawn rotation. Do, do, do. I thought I had. Bunch of spawn, but looks like I don't anymore. I think I need to change my fracking context. Can't see shit. <laughs> Do do Trina. Yeah, plants and mush is hard to handle. Get a headphone with all that. Yeah, that's the other thing. Gnats, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You get the gnats going on and you're fucking. Yeah, bath three started good band. Do 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 night duck. Night undead. Do, 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 uh, yeah, I don't know names, policy, can't really do much if YouTube's fucking up, but should be okay now, I think. Do, 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 hello, PPP, see you later, Karina. Let's see, yeah, I can't, I'm of limited do, 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 do. Limited things I can do if YouTube's fucking up. Do do man, I really wish that screen resolution was better. Oh well. I need to go get some food at some point, and I need to. 
pay a bill, pay the bill. And then they were like, they gave it to me again. It's like, I paid this bill already, motherfuckers. <laughs> and to get all tricky. See this thing they, ah, man, I just did not cooperate today. Mm-hmm. Problem everybody pays, you know, you pay with your QR codes and shit. I like, paid my rent with a QR code and it's like, like I got it in my phone, but I don't know. You think all that shit being electronic now would be a lot easier to keep track of, but nope. I have to go bust out the old paper receipt. How many people check their bank accounts now? It's like, you know, how many transactions do you make on a daily basis? Like, I guarantee. You could be getting robbed all day long and you would never even notice it. Like people used to actually like balance their checkbooks and shit, you know? Like nobody does that anymore. That's why these like credit, I heard somebody bitching about, oh, the credit card is billing me every month for like the last year. It's like, yeah, because like nobody really looks at their credit card. I should probably throw away some of these old plates, but see, look, it's got pins on it. I don't know. I'm just like OCD sometimes. I just keep them stacked up like this. I figure like, what the fuck? It's already a stack of plates. Eh, let's keep them stacked up. And I'm going to put this back in the old gates area. <laughs> the, old, the old area, the gates. I might set this off to the side, make sure it grows before I get it back. Before I stick it back in the old gate area. Do, 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 do. Okay, what else? Got a nap times a BHT. Now I got to make, got to start making some executive decisions. This is really, really ugly. I want to subculture this. It looked. So here's where I go from a multi spore that was kind of dirty. And then I'm going to go to something uh, that would be more of a towards a leaning towards a monoculture, but. Since this still looks kind of ugly, I am going to actually try to get a dicaran isolate out of this. Because it just looks kind of nasty on the plate. I see something kind of rise over there that I'm going to get it. Oh, to be honest. None of it really looks all that great. There's a little riso area there. I might. I don't know. It didn't look that great, but what MS? Because it's not not really. This is my hillbilly mono. So I test this sucker out. Make sure. So I already got fruit from it. So that's why it's the F two. So kind of like the mono parts. So once it's already, you know, it's gone through uh, the whole karyogamy and meiosis, like the mono part kind of becomes irrelevant because now it's just essentially a shocky cross with the hillbilly. The whole diamond thing kind of has no relevance anymore. Because now it's just the shocky mix with the hillbilly. So you get a daimon and you can essentially do a daimon. And so instead of doing a monmon, you do a daimon. And so it's kind of like, that's a trick. It's a nice trick. You don't have to have two monos. So normally in nature, you would have like a, two gametes, like a sperm and an egg, which are both haploid. So when those two things come together, they form the dicarion for us or diploid in, in you know, some like humans. And then you go through all that biology stuff. So that's the other thing. If you guys are interested in all these genetics, like kind of, you're going to have to learn a few of the words. It's hard. Like if you don't understand some kind of 
basic bio stuff like what is a haploid what is a diploid what is you know meiosis but you don't have to memorize this is one of the things i hated about bio is like you don't have to memorize the the meiosis diagram and oh this is metaphase and anaphase and prophase but all that shit fucking irrelevant i hated that shit it's like biochemistry they make you memorize all these fucking enzymatic pathways that are fucking useless like, oh, this is a Krebs cycle. This is a TCA. Blah. It's fucking pointless, and you never, ever even use it ever again. But that's what fucking, like, the chemistry teachers who force you to memorize parts of the periodic table. So fucking stupid. Taught chemistry for fucking 20 years. You know what? Every chemistry lab has a fucking periodic table on the wall. It's my hillbilly mono looking okay a bit thick but not quite not rhizo so that's okay stereo jack frost i only got three bags of spawn left and i got a jack frost in the tent now but it looks kind of funny so i'm gonna do another bag of spawn because i see this one has little pins on there hey look the little cute jack frost pins <laughs> <laughs> so uh the one i got in the tent now i don't know why it looks funny dropped it on its head i also have three isolates of jack frost <laughs> so this is the normal i think the other one is my second isolate jack frost was one of those yeah when first came out man i was like wow oh, like if that's like all people talked about was like jack frost for like a year or two i don't know <laughs> like, i don't remember if jack frost even is it with like uh yeah i can't remember dave Frost like something but i don't remember what It's like it was a B plus and something else, but I played an ant, old anthrax song from Among the Living. It's called Indian. It's like funny. Back in the, where this anthrax album came out, I was like a little skateboard and punk. I had no idea there was any ever issues with. <laughs> I didn't even know, man. I grew up in a very multiracial area of town, and I didn't really know we had all these fucking problems that the rest of the world had, I guess. <laughs> Went to high school. Didn't really think much about it. But until I'm 50, I need, I need some fucking 21 year old to tell me like how fucked up I was. But you. <laughs> Sorry if there's any white bitches out there in the audience. Probably like one or two. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, they would all really, really hate me. They'd be like, they would be listening. <laughs> any other questions?
do 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 would you full send um i don't know an ace again i don't these words that you guys use on your discords and shit i don't know what full send means um i don't know i would i just did though i think that jack frost this has got a bunch of pins on it i just made spawn out of it i, I don't know what full send means if you're doing like a tiger drop or whatever um and i, I can't keep up with y'all's like um slang and shit that you use on the forums i don't know what full send means I heard you every hair make her do a flush. So self, that's I usually I just stop at the second flush. That's the other thing where you'll get mites. Um, I was talking about mites. I forgot already. Uh, yeah, mite person. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, I don't know. anyway, um, yeah, mites. If you're going for second, third flushes, the thing with mites, they'll lay eggs, and so if you're going for a second or third, that's when they'll show up. They'll show up on the second or third flush, and that's when you've got a problem because you'll probably have mature. They're so tiny. I thought the first time I saw them, I thought it was quar dust. Like I was, I was pulling out my tub, and I like I didn't even know. I was like, "Why is this so dusty?" I thought it was spores at first, and I was like, "What is this quar dust on the side of my tub?" And then I realized they were kind of like slippery. And then I looked at my finger and I was like, oh, wow, like the quar dust is moving. And then I realized, oh, my God, those are fucking insects. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, shit, I looked at them under the microscope. Like I picked, pulled a piece of, uh, oh, got a Slayer song going here. They pulled out, a, I pulled out a piece of the substrate and put it under the microscope. Oh, my God, I was like horrified. It was like. If you've ever, it was like a, a fucking like horror movie. It was like, oh my God, that shit is in my substrate. There was like thousands and thousands and thousands of mites all throughout my substrate. This, uh, and it took me, so I threw that away. And then like the next day it was in the next tub next to that. And then it went, that went on for about two weeks until literally my tent was empty. And I, I might've been doing mono tubs then, I don't remember. So my tents were empty, uh, not monotubs, uh, Martha's. So I basically threw everything away. And then I went through that like three times. And then that's when I realized like I had a bag of ATL spawn that was like five months old. That literally was a whole fucking nest full of mites. It was like a little bunch of little frosty pins there. Oh, it's kind of funny, you guys. Actually, you know, Jack Frost is quite that phenotype is actually quite common in fact i've got so like i like here is a fruit that looks a hell of a lot like jack frost right this is that nirvana and that um like the jack frost phenotype is uh i mean nothing against you know it's dave's creation it's just that that phenotype if you start crossing shit you will get that phenotype it's one of the like I, I did probably I've done probably 15 crosses that generated that phenotype. It's the kind of like medium sized albino with like and it gets really blue after the gills mature, which is too late, by the way, to swap spores. Um, but uh, you need to swab it. That's why that one was on the dryer, because I swabbed it like yesterday. That was the Nirvana cross with the Stormtrooper, I believe. And uh yeah, it's a very, the Jack Frost phenotype. It's like a standard kind of, it's like Melmac or Penis NB or like kind of like, you know, a, a like ABC, you know, like a GT. There's about like six, maybe seven or eight sort of phenotypes that like kind of pop up again and again and again. When you start crossing things and doing multi-sports bond, you'll realize that like, oh, it's like, oh, it's that Jack Frost phenotype again. Or it's like, oh, which is actually a true albino Cambodian, which is also like an Avery's albino, which is just like a stormtrooper and a Stax and like probably about 20 or 30 other common names that are all basically a Jack Frost phenotype. <laughs> so speaking of that, I got a pile of those sitting there. I got new spores. 
put this back in the other room that's got the piles of Jack Frost fucking shit and a true albino Cambodian and all this other shit. Uh, where's my Jack Frost pile? <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, three Jack Frost isolates next to the great white monster and the BP and a bunch of other shit. I want a fruit that I did not look at anymore. <laughs> oh, there we go. See if fucking YouTube will pick that up. <laughs> the most classic fucking drop right there in metal. Uh, anyone know about Blue Vuitton? I don't know what you want to know about it. Uh oh. Shit bouncing around. Paying for unknown Amazon Prime. Uh, it's fucked up. Blue Vuitton, what do you want to know about Blue Vuitton? Uh, yeah, Skidabate Acid Pathway. Yeah, that's shit you need to remember. Yeah, this fucking it's annoying. Biochemistry. I had the one of the other teachers I worked with. This fucking I want. I'll just say this fucking bitch. She made them memorize all the twenty uh, amino acids, like the twenty kind of like amino acids that are basic building blocks of protein. She made her students memorize the fucking structures for all of them. Not just like all oh, the basic ones, the acidic ones, the ones that had like you know hydrophilic, hydrophobic side chains or whatever fucking groups on them like she made them she would like she made them like rewrite like draw the fucking chemical structure for like tryptophan and aspartic acid and fucking you know cysteine and all this like this bitch made them memorize that shit i was like that is useless fucking brain space you fucking dumb bitch it was like why are you making them do that uh do 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 do, do. ace ace i'm not sure i think you're same question again uh albino teacher and ape is a yeah i'm not sure albino teacher mean tat true albino teacher yeah it could be I don't remember tidal wave pins full send entire play dagger yeah you just send it if it's not dirty and they're not they're not like moldy i i would not because you generally don't want like they're gonna just turn into moldy like shit they're not gonna they might they'll go back vegetative and the end when they get in the spawn but i mean in general you don't want to just it's like when you make spawn and you and you're doing spawn to bulk if you see a big ass chunk of agar you should probably pull it out like you don't have to but it's kind of generally not a good idea to have you know waste floating around in there do, 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 do. Yeah, Excel self. If you think Jedi mind fuck is like so much different than other cultigens, you're, you're, I say you're making that shit up in your head, dude. That's a very subjective, like trip reports are all very, very subjective. Uh, and when you like do enough different kinds of cultigens, you realize that, that, oh, wait, when I, oh, this other one, like, wow, I thought Pink Buffalo was so much different than Lizard King. And then you realize, like, wow, no, they're not. That's just because, like, that I was dehydrated, or that was the day I was really happy, or that was the other day I, like, had a fight with my girlfriend, or that was the day, you know, I was really, really high on weed, too. And then you realize, like, oh, wait, every one of these has been a different trip. And then you realize, like, yeah, maybe all that shit I said about, whoa, like, you know, my, my, by uh, my fucking elbow Jedi mind fuck. That was the best trip ever. That's the best cultigen ever. And you're like, oh wait, no, they're all the same, basically. Thing we don't know the content of these things. Just guess it. Yeah, as soon as you hear people start talking about the big differences between strains, it's either number one, they're trying to sell you something. Like I heard this one guy, literally like Pink Buffalo, like he would go on and on and on and for like hours and hours and hours about like how great Pink Buffalo was. And you know why? Because he was selling. He was like one of the only guys who had that strain at the time. And it was like, oh, now I understand. You're selling it. That's why you think it's the best strain ever. 
can usually tell when somebody talks about one thing over and over and over again, it's probably because they're about ready to try to sell it to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. This is like a nice, nice relaxing day if you ain't in really much of a hurry, to be honest. I got 20 hours of stream yard and DK's got 20. So like we could keys, I don't know, dichotomous keys, DK. I don't know what people call them. Her DK calling him keys the other day. So I've asked him. I don't know if he has a preference. Here is another yellow umbo multi spore. Oh my God. What is all this shit? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. No, this is not the yellow umbo. I thought that was wrong. This is not the yellow umbo. This is not the yellow umbo that I want. Another yellow umbo there. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be making multi-spores of these or not. But, uh, let me do this. There's a gnat. This is Yoshi's gnat. <laughs> See that thing? All this like Yoshi shit laying around. Because, like, one of the a couple of Thai dudes, they went in on, like, you know, we occasionally trade shit. These dudes, like, went in and bought, like, $800 worth of Yoshi shit or something. I think they bought all, like, James Cruz's shit, and they bought all of Yoshi shit. And so, like, half the genetics in Thailand now is, like, Yoshi shit. <laughs> Which I hate to say it, but people are now realizing that's not really all that great. Most of it, to, like I hear them all bitching about it, like, man, man this is fucked up. This class, like, eh. I don't know, man. This is America. Don't blame me. <laughs> it's not my fault. Um, what the fuck am I doing? I need a bag of spawn. Green, I should say. Oh man, I only got two. that's the thing. I only got two bags of grain spawn left, but it kind of doesn't matter because I don't have any room in my tent and I need to make more grain anyway. I don't got room for it, so add it. I don't know. See, I'm just cutting a strip of that seeing maybe, and then I'm going to... Doesn't look like super riser, but normally on these multi-spore plates, usually don't... It's kind of weird. Like, you don't usually see anything super riser shoot out, but you just make spawn out of it anyway. Yeah, you get like a little brave after a while. So normally when you first start out cultivating, you're like, I need a nice, really super riso plate to send to spawn. That, see, that's why these words like full send and stuff, like these things don't really have a lot of context to me because I don't know. I don't know. People like acronyms and all this shit. Like they like coming up with these like catchy little words, like code words, like slang. <laughs> It's like teenagers, like it reminds me of like teenagers, like they make like to make up words that only they know so they can like communicate and code, you know, like, oh man, that's sus, bro. Like you should sus that. It's like, oh, you mean like suspicious? It's like, and then I realized like, wow, it's like, I heard a dude, he was like the drug czar or something. And he was like, oh, so using the word sus. And he was like, we need to suss this out in the state legislation. It's like, dude, that's not really a word. Like sus is like short for suspicious, but it's like, like you're using slang, like you're a state legislator. 
And you're using the word sus, really? Like, oh. I mean, I guess everybody knows what it means now. This shit gets used on probably nightly news and then figure it out. It's kind of funny. I feel sorry for anybody who's got to learn English, man. Sure, most of y'all are native English speakers. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be listening to this, but you got it. Lucky. The rest of the world <laughs> has to figure out this fucked up language we call English. Luckily, for most of y'all out there, it's probably American English. So, believe it or not, you have a significant head start on the rest of the world. Like every airport you ever go through, you're going to be able to read the signs. Like 70% of the rest of the world doesn't have that luxury. <laughs> like, like I can go through an airport in Japan and I can still read the signs. It's like, you know, when you go to like Mexican food aisle and you're like, what the fuck are frioles? You know, <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Well, imagine that being like an airport and you've got like 20 minutes to make it to your next gate. And you're trying to figure out, like, you know, what the fuck is Wada Hoopa, Tokido's uh, fucking Watla Coche, F2T1. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm fading here. I don't know why I didn't sleep enough again last night. I thought it was, that was a thing. I went to bed at like 8 a.m. So when I woke up, I thought it was 3 p.m., which would have been enough sleep. But now I realized it was actually 1 p.m. So I, I like only slept for like maybe four hours. It's probably not enough. That's what I'm dealing with now. I haven't drank enough caffeine probably to override that. So this is uh, Natalensis and Bon Hua Tanon. Bon Hua Tanon, which reminds me, I might. Make an actual BHP with an own bomb bag. I only got one. Whose bomb bags left? Oh my god! God! Oh my god! Oh my god! I got like forty-five things over here. I want to make a bomb out of. Okay, let's see. I, I got an ultra thick boy. This is like chaotic shaman. He sent me some shit. Ultra thick boy. Let's see. I am really, really afraid that that's just gonna be another. I reckon brown cube isolate, which is fine. I got nothing against them, but I don't think we need to be making up new names for. Oh, but I see a F3 of a ODP times a net, and it's got a little Rizo shooting out there. I So this is a multi spore spawn. I, I don't have to make a spawn out of that. Do. E -do -do. Oh, rocket some overkill up in this motherfucker. Overkill, another under, I think underrated band. Um, I might make some fucking, make some pan spawn too. Zero. Yeah, make some. Can't forget the pans. I had a nice little experience on the pans. Cut like a month ago. Some of that spawn. I actually got some spawn over there that I need to sort out. You guys got any questions up there? Do, 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 do. Hey, Dakotomus, how you doing? Do do. I'm trying to go the best thing. Yeah, right, right. Well, let's see. Wait, oh, situational trips. Yeah, that's, that's it. Tips. Face. <laughs> I didn't see the R. Yep, you're right about that. Set setting. Yeah, but set setting, and that's like been the, you know, that's what it is, right? I don't know. And obviously, like dosage and shit like that. But as far as like cultigen goes, I don't think if you didn't tell anybody what the cultigen was, I don't think they'd ever fucking know the difference in fact i know i mean i hate to say this but on a, it's like gee like somebody you know they wanted b plus and i sent them gt 
you know what? They never knew the fucking difference. Like, it's like, like, I, you just don't really need to tell people that stuff. They're like, oh man, I really want GT. And you send them B plus and they never fucking question it. It's like not something you really need to tell them. <laughs> I'm trying to grow the best strain. Yes. Just grow, get your strains and grow them well. That's the way to go at it. Don't, I'm just focus on genetics. Although that being said, I've got like 400 fucking strains of different genetics sitting right here on. So why the fuck do I got all this shit? I don't know. It's like Pokemon cards, you know, you just want to get them. <laughs> Which I could bank money, but I'm not nice stacking up on my charts. Uh, no, so call me whatever you want. Just come, come on. Hey, yo, but I, so. but yeah, good morning, dichotomous. But you should tell me, dichotomous, what to call you, just because I hear other people. I don't want to be the weird one. If I'm the one who was the weird one who's calling you DK and everybody else calls you Keys, then I'm like, I don't know. I just want to be a cool kid, man. Do 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 top of the board and good day that's it we're more in all right it's gonna that PSA I have that one too the I still like that one that was a good speaking of little brown cubes yeah Hawaiian like you can substitute that for B pluses GTs fucking pretty much anything you want Burmas, Cambodians, like whatever. It's like, yeah, the Hawaiian looks kind of like generic little brown cube. But nice. At least the ISO I have, it's, but it's nice. It does well. Do, 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 do. So to culture and pans and aggregation. Um, Dustin, yeah, you might have been asking me. I don't know about any tips. Um, if you got pans that are growing slow, then you might, they might not be pans. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know, man. That could be a problem. Like pans generally don't grow that slow on normal MAA. So I would think maybe if like this is sterile, this is a pan and I, I would check this again for clamps, but I'm feeling kind of lazy right now. So I'm just going to make spawn. Um, pan mycelium doesn't look like fucking cube mycelium. That's a problem. Could be a contaminant. If it's a contaminant, then that would be why it's growing slowly. Now, I'm going to leave that plate open because I might actually, after I make this next bag of spawn, I might have to go check that for clams. And if I'm really super fancy, I might. Here's the other thing. Yeah, no, I actually only pulled pull that down. I want this as a pan mycelium. Pan mycelium likes more oxygen. So I purposely left more airhead uh, headspace in there. I know from experience already the pan my mycelium, uh, it really, really they like more air. So I purposely um, I left more headspace in there. So. That's one thing I definitely have noticed is that the pans, like a lot of people said, but they like oxygen, man. They grow like a little bit faster. They like oxygen. They don't like getting breaking. They're like maybe two breaking shakes. So I'm gonna try to mash this up pretty good so that I don't really hopefully need to do like one breaking shake. That's probably as good as. So. Um, yeah, they really, really like their oxygen, I think. So more head space. And then here's the final, the final, the final coat. 
Down the yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold this off to the side, guys. And I want to show you because I had some people ask me about how to do squash mounts again. If you're going to look for... Um, if you're going to look for clamps or lack of clamps, you got to know how to do a squash mount. Otherwise, it's going to be really, really hard. This is another thing. I don't know if it's out of ignorance, but these guys who are suggesting people like cut out chunks and mount a cover slip on the end. I don't know. Lots of weird, weird stuff that I don't understand. It's like, I don't know if they were purposely fucking with people or they were just really like kind of ignorant and didn't know like this easier ways to do a lot of this shit. I don't know. The other one I saw, I wanted to illustrate it earlier. I can, I can do it with this plate after I make this spawn. So somebody makes suggestion, I don't know, what did they call it? Like you do this overlay where you basically take agar that's like almost solidified and you like overlay a contaminated, like a bacterial plate. I want to show you guys like a much, I know DK, you got me thinking about this DK because we were talking about it. Um, there's a much simpler way to trick. I'm sorry, I had to write this specifically. Um, lots of shit to write. This is a ODP times a NAT that I really wish would do something interesting, but it's on its F4 and it really just shit. It'll throw like three or four little shitty fruit bodies and I've managed to get spores, but it hasn't done anything. Fantastic yet. But I'm hoping by like F4, F5, maybe some weird shit will shoot out, but probably not. I was kind of, I almost gave up on it already. Like if it doesn't do something different this time, I might. Move on. Like some fucking free bird. Let's go. You want me to sing Sweet Home Alabama and Dichotomy? DK, keys. Late for dinner. If you don't tell me what to call you, I'm just going to call you late for dinner from now on. Uh, did you say late for dinner? LF. The LFD. <laughs> so what I want to show you guys was this is this is a way easier way. Um, if you do think you have like some kind of like bacterial contaminant, I'll show you guys here's the like, heat up your scalpels and get them cool. Um, I don't know you got it. What do we call it the other day? That got to be called like the trap door, something like that. What do you call it? Son would do a sp spider's trap door, a trap door tech or something like that. And who, here's what you do. Low. So let's say, so get these nice and hot, but let them cool down because you're going to be fucked with the agar. Let me show you. So if you had a theoretically bacterial plate, let's say you, you had, or maybe you had some kind of, oh, I might have one, but I don't want to waste a plate. So let's just say you had some bacteria on there. And the idea is that, so what this person did was they put, um, they basically took their plate that already had like a colonized piece that was like bacterial. And they took agar that was like really, really close to solidifying, you know, it's probably like 42 degrees. And they poured it on top of that contaminated area. And the idea is that you like overlay, I think that it's called overlay, you overlay the plate and then the mycelium will grow up through that agar and then you harvest the kind of clean, the, the clean mycelium that is grown up through the plate. So the idea is that bacteria won't grow through, bacteria aren't motile, they don't poop. Most of them don't, but that's not really true. But anyway, mo they don't move up through the agar. So then you can basically take your aerial mycelium and scrape it off and put it on a new plate and it should be clean. That is like kind of a complicated way to do it. I can show you, I haven't done this in a while, but I want to show you like a way easier way to do that.
trap door. This is where it gets a little tricky. I don't, you can do this with one scalpel, but let me try with two. So again, this is gonna be tricky, right? Because you wanna get this under. So I'm gonna have to do it. This is where the, the surgeon thing so This is why you wanna, why you wanna use cool scalpels. Trapdoor tech. Now remember which which one which one did I use for the so don't so this is the one I didn't touch the transfer piece yet. See? Buckload easier, right? So what's gonna happen is the mycelium is just gonna, I don't know how well you see that. The mycelium is just gonna grow under and up through that bottom. And yeah, it'll shoot out the side, but the idea is bacteria. So yeah, that's all you do, you guys. You don't need to do that. So this is here, like oh, trap door. <laughs> there you go. You saw it here first, you guys. Ed's trap door tech. Anyway, uh, that's to get. So the idea is that you're getting rid of bacterial contamination, which this one doesn't have. Um, now I just fucked up my label area. So yeah, DK, that's what I was trying to explain to you the other day on the on the stream. Uh, that's it, T0, F3, yeah, that'll work, I think. So you're just doing that to try to eliminate bacteria. So again, the idea is the bacteria is just gonna stay under there and then it's gonna grow up and off to the sides. I don't know, with no bacteria, that's... So I guess that, that might be a good way to kind of like uh, isolate some kind of monocultures too. Because if you do that, it's going to probably, you'll probably get like different sectors shooting out. Different sides. Oh, again, yeah, simple, simple things. That's like with like the grab and drag and shit like that. Like you don't need all those fucking vials and all that shit. The more manipulation you do, the more you're going to pour hot agar or, you know, lukewarm agar on there, your mommy going to kill the mycelium. It's going to spread bacteria everywhere. Like, this is like way easier, right? There's another way I think there's somebody had, they used to have, they used to poke under, uh, uh, sometimes take a hot syringe and get under and they, you can pull some of the culture from like the embedded, the, the culture that's like embedded in the agar. That seems way, 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 way more complicated than necessary. Like that's gonna work perfectly fine, right? Like the mycelium is just gonna grow up. Cause you know, mycelium will go through the agar. And then either way, you know, you're gonna get shit like squirting out all over. So it's almost kind of like you're doing like a trench sequestration also. You know, so it's again, one of those things, you're doing like multiple things at the same time. You're like doing like a trench. It could shoot out there and then like, it just works. It's easy, man. Like most things in life, simpler is easier. Like you don't need to fuck around like pouring 42 degrees agar on your fucking culture. But it's like, it's, I hate to say it. People make shit way too complicated. Like it doesn't have to be that complicated. Do do do. So that might have, I don't know that. I think that's the way I used to do it. Maybe I just made all that shit up. I don't know. I recall doing that some point in my prior life. Like whoever has asked me earlier, like I've done so much tissue culture work in my life. I've never tissue cultured cannabis. I'd like to, but so let's do a squash mount. Let me, how about first little this mosquito that's floating around in my room. Um, fucking mosquitoes. Uh, let me go pee first. Let me go look, see if y'all got any questions first. So I'll answer a question while I'm peeing. <laughs> this is what song this is. A fucking rocking song going on here. Oh, nuclear assault. Yeah, I was wondering who that was. 
You guys got any questions to see? A good trapdoor, trapdoor tech. Yeah, yeah. So let's call it trapdoor help the and trapdoor tech. I did get that from somebody else, but I don't I don't remember. I don't remember where I got it from. Uh see, I've been watching your old videos and seen that like um, um, Power Man crapshoot or what? <laughs> no preference on the animal. Oh yeah, you're right. Dichotomous, yeah, dichotomous. They'll be like, "What the fuck was that? What is your name?" Uh, is there a way to check a diamond? For besides drawing it out, um, check it for what? Let's see. Uh, sometimes they got to figure out what these questions are. Check a diamond, like to see if it worked or not. So the the, the problem is when you get a diamond, if you're doing it on a plate, you don't like. I stopped doing them on plates because I realized I wasn't going to be really certain that the new dicarion was not just the old dicarion shooting out, and that made me uncomfortable. And then I realized you know what, it's a waste of time because I'm never going to know and I'm going to fruit it anyway. So how about I just skip the agar plate stage? <laughs> like I was like, I don't really need to do the agar plate stage because I'm going to fruit this anyway. So I'm like, let me just skip the whole fucking agar part. <laughs> I can just put the shit in the bag. And that's what I did. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Testing it. The problem is you're not going to really know the old dicarian and the new dicarian. You're not going to be able to tell the difference morphologically. So you could check it, I guess, to see if you... Fucking mosquitoes, motherfuckers. If you had a dicarion and then you had another dicarion, you can't, you can't differentiate them. That's the problem. Um, I remember that I was wrestling with this problem for a while. Like, how am I going to know the new dicarion? Well, and then I realized, here's what you do. You make the dicarion an albino and you make the mono a pigmented mono. So if your fruit is pigmented, you know you were successful because assuming that the pigmentation gene or whatever... <laughs> Gene cluster, whatever, is the dominant. Let's call them, I'll make up another term. Let's call them pseudo Mendelian. I don't even know if this is a real term. Call them pseudo Mendelian characteristics. If pigmentation is pseudo dominant, <laughs> I wonder if that's a word. Pseudo dominant, i.e., could be multiple genes, could be polygenic, but the, <laughs> the overall morphological trait would be pigmented. So let's say that that pigmented is the, the dominant or pseudo dominant case, uh, characteristic. Then if you have a mono that's pigmented and that mono successfully accepts one of the uh, dicarion's haploid nuclei, and that's they're both uh, they're both uh, albino genotypes, your fruit's still going to be pigmented because the, the, the mono, um, the haploid genotype from the mono is going to take over and make it pigmented. So that's how you can test it. Um, other than that, I'm not really sure exactly what you're referring to. Now I'm back on the doo -doo -doo, back on the phone. But I got to figure out where the hell. Crap door tech. Yeah, we might might have just made up. Do 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 crap door crap. Do crap door technique. Yeah, ha ha ha. Is that it? Uh, yeah, ace again. There's no reason to do that technique. That's that's why I showed. I just that's why I just showed you how to do that. There's no really reason to do that technique. Uh, opening a contam plate. So you're only going to do this ace with bacterial contamination. It won't work if you if you have fungal contamination. That's not why you do that technique. You do that technique uh, to get rid of bacterial contamination. The same as trench sequestration. Same as different, like some people like to use the charcoal media. The, if that whole technique, the only reason you would use that is to get rid of bacteria. It utilizes the fact that bacteria don't move uh, through agar. So a lot of times when you have embedded bacteria or bacteria that are kind of sticky with your mycelium, 
you need to force them to go th- go through like a physical barrier because the way i mean that's what fungi do they're filamentous and they will shoot through wood or substrate or agar bacteria won't do that bacteria generally move on surfaces or through contact they won't like burrow through agar so i utilize the fact that there's a physical barrier and the the physical way that mycelium and bacteria operate is different so yeah that's yeah what bk was saying there yep exactly that's exactly what dk said good that we're concurring there <laughs> Okay, what was the other thing? I want to show you guys how to make a squash mount, and that's probably going to be the end of the activities for today. I always start out with a damn bill. It's almost 5 p.m. here. These fucking people are trying to double charge me for my rent. Fuckers. Oh, and I've left Kiki's thing on here, and it's getting a little bit warm. Get a squash mount, you guys. You don't know how to do a squash mount again. Get your scalpel sterile and let it cool down. If you are going to look at 400X on the scope, which is what you should be doing, you don't need stains. Here's a cover slip. Probably can't see that very well. I'm going to put it there so I don't forget. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to shave off a tiny, 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 tiny little piece. I mean, no. See how small that is? Ow, that fucking scalpel's still hot. (laughs) See how small that is? Little tiny, tiny, tiny little piece. And I'll put it on the end, because that's the way I got my scope set out. I just do it on one side, usually. Put that on the thing there. And so, and that's a little tiny, tiny, tiny little piece there. Tiny that is. Come in here, put on my cover slip, and just try to like squish it down, like on the sides, and then a little bit in the center, and then push hard. Don't worry, you are gonna see clamps. If you see how tiny that little tiny piece, see, I didn't even push it hard enough because there's still air under there. You want to get that as smooth as possible, like thin as possible, I should say. And we put that under 400x. That's the way you make a squash mount. This shit, I've seen people before. They were talking about literally, I've seen some dumb, dumb shit, you guys. They were talking about like, cut off a piece of this agar and then put a cover slip. I've seen where they're like, you have to like cut off. I'll just show you guys. I've seen dumb, dumb shit throughout the years. So they were like, oh, you got to come and then take. They would do like this and then they would take a piece of this. This is not right, you guys. And then they would put this on an agar. And then they would put like a cover slip on that and all this weird shit. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Like, I don't know where people got these ideas. And they so they would like be trying to look at this shit under the scope with a cover. I don't know. There there are reasons why you would do that. And I do know where that comes from, but I don't even want to get into that. But it well, I, I'll can do get it. It does if you want to see like the canidia fours of like some asexual fungi. You need to grow them. So you would take that. I, I kind of, I'm going to go look at that later. But so you, what you would do, you would take another cover slip and you would put it on there and let it grow out in a humidified chamber for like a day. And then you would see the canidia fours for like penicillium. They'll grow sideways so that they'll be growing. Basically, they'll be like a press to the bottom of the cover slip and you can look at them. Yeah, like oil immersion and shit like that. But there is a reason to do that, but not for us. It's like people mixed up techniques. Like they learned something in one of their like microbiology classes and then they like brought that over the cube world and it like, it's not the same place. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna go look at this under the microscope, but I'm not gonna really wanna. Yeah, that's I've done that before and I'm not really up for it right now. So unless any of y'all got questions, um, I don't want to turn this into a live slash the the microscope video looking for clamps video. That's like already a video. I'll leave that out to you, Keys, man. If you 
if you want to do that, uh, you got the camera on your scope. <laughs> you can do that one, man. I did one already, but I don't got a camera on my scope. <laughs> you can do that one. People will love it. Sure. So I think that's the end of the show, boys and girls. Unless I go back to the computer over there. I'm going to check this later. You can also let these sit for a while. You don't like need to check them straight away, but... Um, let me see if you got a question. I do I, like if there's clamps there, uh, it'll be really, really obvious, really, really quick. Yeah, ACK does have his. Uh, or, uh, yeah, you can put it in the chat. You're welcome, DK. Please put your YouTube in the chat. I don't. Uh, I don't know. It's got one of those weird long names, or if you have a mine, I figured out some way to put a. It's just like backslash edward grand or whatever um yours still has like that big long number thing on it so i'm looking at this astero and i see a fucking huge clamps jesus christ oh my god you guys pans have fucking huge jesus christ i want to show this to you guys these are if, if you want us a goddamn fucking clamp these pans have Huge fucking clamp. ATL seven. Of course, I now that I said that I'm fucking moved this. I moved my field and now I don't see any. <laughs> so I just saw like a bunch of huge fucking clamps. And then I now I'm sitting next to my dryer, which I got on, which is fucking blowing hot air right in my face. Why is everything blowing fucking hot air in my face today? <laughs> Well, anyway, you guys, I just saw like three huge ass clamps and then I moved the fucking field of view and I don't see any more. So let me not, let me not show you guys and clamps because I don't see any right now. That's the other thing. Some things you like when you see clamps, you know, it's a dicarion. Problem if you don't see clamps, that doesn't mean it's a monocarion. It just means you may not have found clamps yet. Kind of pain in the ass. Now I'm a little freaked out because I thought, I'm pretty sure I just saw a bunch of giant fucking clamps and now I can't find any. Ah, there's another one. Okay. Or the, these aren't. These aren't as pretty as I'd like them to be. So I'll just keep these to myself. Yeah, these aren't very pretty, you guys. But they're. Here's another slide and spray it with alcohol and wipe it real quick. You can re I reuse the same slide. Don't reuse cover slips. You will inevitably end up breaking one and stabbing it into your finger. Cover slips are not worth the price and the danger. Slides, though, I reuse the same slide like for the same like last year. And also make sure you turn off your fucking microscope light, you guys. So if she got an old one with like a really expensive fucking halogen lamp on it, like me, uh, that cost, I think they're about 40 bucks to replace. Anyway, I think that's the end of the show, you guys. If, uh, if anybody's got any questions here. Do do Ace again, I don't do social media. Yeah, you know, they, I'll tell you one thing, Ace, you don't need to really tell people that. <laughs> Um, I've noticed like people seem to like get on here. You know, if you don't want to do Facebook and don't want to do Instagram, you're missing out. But if that's your choice, um, that's your choice, but you're missing out. I'm if you're just going to do discord, like not everybody's going to migrate to discord, dude. Like you're, if you're, if you refuse to join Facebook and you refuse to join Instagram, that's your choice, but you're missing out on lots and lots of valuable information. Um, but yeah, I don't know, but that's up to you. But I know some people have, they like to, uh, expound upon their hatred of YouTube, uh, Facebook and Instagram and all that. But you know, it's just simple fact that's your choice, but you're missing out. You're, 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 per you're just so you know, you are missing out on lots of information. A lot of shit's going on on Facebook. You know, you can set up new accounts that have nothing to do with your ex-girlfriend or anything. <laughs> you, 
you don't have to like you don't have to like anything or you just set up an account and like you know look at stuff on facebook <laughs> you don't have to like participate or anything just look <laughs> anywho i don't know i just got lots of friends that they're so they're like every time you mention social media or they have to like tell you how much they hate facebook and how they don't participate in it. it's like yeah yes i got it i got it i, I know i know i know it's like abortion and then and religion and like politics like i like you just don't talk about it you know <laughs> anyway you guys uh sorry i'm kind of ragging on you a little bit there but yeah i just it's i know facebook is evil that is evil Has anybody else got any questions my phone either locking up here everybody's being quiet so and anyway, i'll talk to y'all later it's almost three hours holy shit amazing how long i can talk yeah exactly that's that's it i mean ace if you like it I, like facebook is not going to come rape you while you're sleeping like it's not it's not that nefarious man like go make a new profile don't tell any of your friends or family about it just join like a couple like pages you'll be fine you're not gonna like it'll be the that would like mark zuckerberg's not gonna come rape you while you sleep like <laughs> <laughs> anyway we all know it's evil i know it's evil we know but me and dichotomous we were just talking about this for like quite a while the other day that's why i'm kind of joking ace is because we were just talking about yeah it's evil everybody knows it's evil but so is the fucking government and so is fucking pepsi and so is like you know fucking toyota and fucking i don't know we all know this <laughs> but you can protect yourself and like pepsi's evil but you don't need to buy it if you don't want to, I guess. Anywho, I'll talk to y'all later. Um, see you guys. Thanks for uh, the questions and whatnot. Hope I help somebody. Maybe we made a new tech. <laughs> Fucking, I, I need to. <laughs> anyway, uh, talk to y'all later. Bye bye.